this and every Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. And let's take a stroll through the various departments on campus. Oh yeah, Bob Massage, healing without medication. Are you suffering from chronic pain, stress, headache, anxiety, muscle aches, menstrual cramps? Look no further. We offer Swedish massage, therapeutic massage, prenatal and postnatal massage, Thai massage, foot and hand massage. For all your relaxation and pain relieving therapy, contact us on 0540-7292-37. Bob Massage, the only massage therapist on UAW campus. Hey, 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 my man, why sneezing and coughing openly like that? The world has come to a standstill. On this global pandemic, COVID-19, the government of Ghana, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and then Ghana Health Service, is advocating for the slogan, Stay at Home. Stay at home to avoid contracting the coronavirus. Continue to wash hands with soap and the running water. Make good use of your aqua hand rub or hand sanitizers. Cover mouth when coughing and sneezing with tissue paper and then discard it appropriately. Avoid crowded areas. Avoid touching your face. Always put on face masks. Eat wall exercise to improve your immune system. Remember, Ghana needs you. Stay safe by staying home. This advertisement is coming from Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. We are the world. We are the When you're so no one team, my research or Ghana Haina, now the Gasco Suno Dosso, now so Gasco Crow, Bira Sena Baroko, only Winneba AME Zion Girls Senior High School, or professional teachers with quality ICT center, boarding facilities, or for Yanko Pono Quando, now what the Tetemo for Mano, or quality library, I open your book, we be since 2006, every year, we record 100% passes in Wasi exams, and your courses be today, business, accounting option, home account. Economics, visual arts, science. For more information, Ebo we are with Winnie Bat. Ebo to my friend. Zero two zero eight one seven six eight eight seven. Zero two zero eight one seven six eight eight seven. And a zero two four eight eight six six zero nine six. Zero two four eight. 866096 AME Zion Girls Quality Education True Christ <laughs> Windy Bay 98.3 FM Windy Bay 98.3 FM Just barely under 50 minutes to the top of the hour right here, 98.3 FM. Very good morning to you, like we always do every weekday. Our session of radio lecture series. Kickstart our this transmission. That is not to forget about what is to come. Remember all to do with going to level 100 students, University of Education, Winneba. Studying the course GPDR 111 Communication Skills. Remember, your lecturer happens to be already set here in the studios as Miss Yvonne Dezo, coming from the Department of Communication and Media Studies, University of Education, Winneba. She is making a presentation this morning on Documentation 1. Remember, it's an exclusive one hour lecture, so you can be rest assured of that. And like we would always want to advise you, 
but don't do the listening all alone. Remember to spread the vine as we form the most powerful network in terms of listening to our flagship radio lecture series right here on Radio Windy Bay. Have your studio lines in advance 0503923158 and then 0332320201. WhatsApp and text up to be 0503923158. You can also do the live uh, watch, if not uh, follow the live streaming on Facebook. That's Radio Winnie Bay 98.3 FM. And then also go to the homepage of our prestigious University of Education, Winneba, on www.uew.edu. And then do the listening as well. So haven't gotten wind of uh, the platforms you can use to do the listening quick to also remind you don't forget you can catch up with everything on twitter that's at windy bay 983 fm instagram windy bay 98.3 fm youtube radio windy bay 98.3 fm those are the other ones remember beyond the radio lecture we'll be back to resume traditional programming that is to do with the news review to be followed by sports and then the other happenings as well like you know every friday as I'm preparing you for the weekend, and like this one happens to be in sight, we surely will be doing so. I happen to be holding the fort for your regular host, Apiakubi Jones, aka Kimba Tuka, supported by Kwame Anamwa, not forgetting Albert Babin Tingani and Zen. This is Caleb Apia, alongside Steven Ose Ajama, my producer this morning. And of course, you that special listener who have tuned in make the formula complete to execute the mission this morning we are going to be with you from now until 10 and then eventually hand you over to that is rebecca roberts and aka shaky spice right here on the ultimate in campus radio so without much ado and with all protocols observed i hand you over to miss yvonne Dezo, who is ready for our radio lecture this very Morning. Let me say very good morning to you, Madam Yvonne Dejo, and you're welcome to the studios. Good morning, and thank you very much. Okay. Good morning to our cherished listeners, especially our students in Level 100, reading communication skills. You are welcome to today's radio lecture on documentation and your lecturer this morning as has already been said i'm miss yvonne dejo from the department of communication and media studies okay so in our previous lecture on academic discourse community we discussed that as part of our academic discourse or interaction, we engage in a type of writing known as academic writing. And we said this type of writing is different from what you were used to in your previous schools before you moved to the university. And that in this type of writing, uh, academic writing we do a lot of or we consult multiple sources before we engage in our writing and we in that lesson we said we look at certain features and we said one of the features or characteristics of academic writing again is after consulting the sources you want to duly acknowledge the sources that you have consulted. So that is what we are coming to look at today. So today we would look at what documentation is, how to incorporate or ways by which we can incorporate the sources we consult into our essays or our writing, and then how we are to reference these sources that we consult. So we would be looking at in-text citation and our text which is we refer to as reference so let's begin by answering the question what is documentation so documentation is the acknowledgement of all the sources that you consult and use in your academic essay so that is giving recognition 
to the owners of the information you used. And what do you do? You provide the names of the authors. And normally in within your writing, which we call the index, you produce the last name of the author plus the year of publication, which will help your readers to know whether the material or the information you are providing is current or is dated or is old. Then we have the reference. And in writing the reference, you are supposed to produce the full name. That is the first and then the last name plus other details, which we would look at as the lecture continues. So let's take this example. Let's take it that you consult a book and then the author is Kofi Ansa. So in trying to acknowledge Kofi Ansa, Within the text, you are, which is the in-text citation, you are going to use only his last name. So answer, let's take it that the work, he published the work in 2018. So it will be answer 2018. And then our text, which, would, which is the reference, you are going to write his full name. So you would have the last name first, which is answer, followed by the initials of his other name. We'll look at that. So, uh, we mentioned that all oh, since the lecture or the beginning of this lecture, I'm saying that from our previous lectures, we've been told that you have to cite the sources you use in the writing of any of your academic essays. So we want to look at how you would first use these sources in your essays. So you've been given a, a project work, you've been given um asked to go and collect data or carry out an experiment and you want to write the report so that is what an academic writing or you've been given an assignment or a take home or a term paper so how would you the sources you you consult the information you have gathered how would you fuse it into your writing we have three ways by which you do that we have three ways by which you can incorporate the information you gather from the sources into your essay. So the first one is you can do what we call a direct quotation or you give a direct quote of what the author or the, uh, from where you are gathering the information from. So what is direct quote? It is the exact representation of words and punctuation from the source. So the source you consult, you write exactly the same words and punctuations the writer used. So we say you quote verbatim, word to word punctuation for punctuation of the writer in, your, in the writing of your essays. However, we want to take note of this, that in this discourse community and in the writing of our academic essays, you are advised to use direct quotes sparingly. That means it is not good to use direct quotation excessively. And why is that? It will make your write-up not flow. It will make it very difficult for people to read and understand you. And the whole of this week, most of us all, we have been looking at developing our writing skills and we were specifically looking at writing of what are paragraphs. And I'm sure, or you recall from your lectures that we talked about three qualities that make a paragraph um, good. And one of the qualities is coherence. So you want to clearly and logically link the ideas in the paragraph. If you use excessive quotes, you cannot do that. But if you are using your own words, then you would be able to use your transitional words or phrases to connect the ideas within your paragraph and between paragraph to paragraph. So it's very important that even though one of the ways by which we can incorporate 
our sources into our academic writing is quotation we have to reduce our use of quotation now what is the next uh, way by which we can fuse our sources into uh, academic writing you can use paraphrase and what it is paraphrase it is the restatement of the main idea or information from a text using your own words but making sure that you do not lose the original meaning of the text so you can use paraphrase then we can use summary we can use summary which is a brief statement of the salient or the main ideas in your own words so you restate what the source is saying briefly using your own words so we can use these three ways to fuse or incorporate sources into our academic writing so we can use direct quotation paraphrase and then we can use summary now if you are using direct quotation you have to put what you are the, the material the information in an inverted comma or what we call the quotation mark and then you produce the name and then the year of what the author and then you make sure that you produce the page as well However, if you are using summary and paraphrase, you only produce the name and then the year of publication and you would not add the page. Now, uh, it is very important that we develop these three referencing skills, which is either you are quoting, you are paraphrasing or you are summarizing because it is what the skill that you would use to incorporate the informations you gathered from all your readings and then at the same time it will help you to support the claims you make in your writing as well as give your writing credibility and then make it what very or enrich your writing and uh when you read it will also help you to understand to get a deeper understanding of the topic you are writing on so that is why it is important to what to gather these resources to give your work some level of what credibility as you consult other sources to support the claims you are making in your writing therefore it is very important that after using these sources you mention the names of what these authors because if you do not do that and you claim ownership of the information it is it is what we call plagiarism and you want to avoid plagiarism if you use a material or an information from an authority or uh, and um, after and you do not acknowledge or give credit to that author, you end up doing what we call plagiarism which is a very serious offense in the academic discourse community so when we talk about plagiarism like i said it's when you use information from someone's work without giving the person credit so you want to avoid that and to avoid that that is why today we are learning what documentation so that you would duly acknowledge the sources you consult now based on the various disciplines that we have in the academic discourse community or in any academic discourse communities we have several documentation styles or formats uh, which helps us to one give credit to the sources we use and then inevitably avoid plagiarism so in this lecture 
we are going to focus on one of them. Uh, during our face-to-face -face interactions, your lecturers would give you some uh, basic uh, knowledge about the other types of documentation style or documentation formats. But for today, our lecture, we are going to focus on the APA documentation style, which means American psychological association documentation style which is what we use in our university that's university of education whenever we use the apa documentation style and i'll take the name again american psychological association documentation style and in using the APA documentation style in your academic essays, you the focus is on the name of the author and then the year of publication. It's on the name of the author and the year of publication. And in using the APA style, we have two forms. So you have the in-text citation in text citation what you use within the text within your writing then which we call citation and then we have the out text which we call reference so at the end of your work you would have what we call the reference list the reference list so with the in text citation you mention the last name of the ATA plus the year of publication. And then in the out text citation, which is reference, you give us the full name, the title of the work, and then you give us, sorry, after the full name, we have the year, then the title of the, if it's a book, and then you have the publisher. So that is the difference. We have in-text citation and then out-text citation, and we are going to take it one after the other. So we want to look at the in-text citation. We want to look at the in-text citation. So with the in-text citation, we are going to focus on, let's say, the number of authors uh, that wrote the, or wrote the book or the article and how to cite them within your text. So with, let's say, a single utter, when you have a single utter, you would bring the utter's last name and the year of publication. And with in-text citation, you can look at it uh, in two ways. So you have what we call the narrative format and then the parenthetical format. So let's start with the narrative format. So with the narrative format, it means you would give the information that you have either paraphrased or summarized before you bring the name Sorry, you would, uh, sorry, let me take that again. The narrative format, you would bring the name of the author and the year of publication before you bring the information. So let's take this example. Let's take this example. So, Mensa, and we know Mensa is a proper noun, so it will start with capital letter. Then after Mensa, you would open a parenthesis and put in the year. So Mensa 2018 suggests that reading is very good for students. So that is what the narrative format. Mensa 2018 suggests that reading is very good for students. Then when we want to look at the other in-text citation, which is the parenthetical format, where you bring the information 
before the name of the author, it will read like this. Research suggests that reading is very good for students. Research suggests that reading is very good for students. Then we open a parenthesis. Then we bring Mensa followed by a comma. Then we write the year of publication, 2018. Then we close the parenthesis and then we bring a period or a full stop. Uh, you cannot see this. So when we have the face-to-face -face interactions, your lecturers would give you vivid examples in the lecture hall and you would get the picture clearer. So when we have a single author, that's what we do. Then what do we do? with two authors or artists you use both names or the authors their last name and you separate it by using an ampersand an ampersand so the ampersand symbol we would you would have that symbol when you have your face to face interaction so in the same way where we looked at either you are using the narrative format or you are using the parenthetical format, you do the same thing. So let's have this example. Reading can make students better writers and speakers. Better writers and speakers. So that means that is what? A parenthetical format. So at the end of the... Um, the information you open a parenthesis and then we would have the name the last names of the two authors so you have let's take it that the, the the source reading can make students better writers and speakers was said by adams and Ewuku. so after i bring my adam i'm going to bring the ampersand symbol and then I'll bring a uku, then I'll have a comma, and then I'll bring 2018, and then close my ampers, uh, sorry, my parenthesis. Then if I'm going or using the narrative format, I'm going to have it in this form. According to Adam's and, so this one you write and A and D, and a uku, then I open a parenthesis. And write the year of publication. So 2018, reading can make students better writers and speakers. So that is when you are doing an in-text citation with two authors. Or yes. Now let's look at three or more authors when you are doing an in-text citation with three or more authors. You use the same step we have talked about, whether you are using one or two authors. The difference here is that you introduce what we call a tal. A tal. So a tal is E T and then A L. A tal. So let's take it that the information was uh, published by three or more authors you are going to have so let's say adam's entry and then or entry adams and ewuku published the work so in doing your in-text citation you are going to write entry et al then you open your parenthesis and then put in 2019 if you are using the narrative format but if you are using the parenthetical format, after you are done saying or giving us the information, then at the end of the information, you open your parenthesis, you bring entry et al, comma, 2019, you close the parenthesis, then you bring what? A full stop. So that is that with citing either a single author, two authors, three or more authors. Now let's look at if you are citing or referencing within text, a group 
as the authors so when we talk about group it can either be a corporation an association or an organization by what a government so you are going to uh, write the name of either the association or the corporation so let's look at this and in doing this the first time you are writing it the first citation you write the name of the association in full but for the subsequent times you would use it in the same write-up you can use what the abbreviated form of that association so let's look at this example for instance we are looking at an association like ghana medical association so the first time we are using it and we want to acknowledge them as a source we would have ghana medical association then we open a parenthesis that means i'm using the narrative format we open a parenthesis and then when i open or you open the parenthesis you bring the abbreviated form so g m a comma then you bring the year so my year is 2020 so ghana medical association with that in my parenthesis has urged the government to provide adequate personal protective equipment to all health facilities in the country so if i want to look at it from a parenthetical format I would have the government has urged that sorry the government has been urged by the Ghana Medical Association to provide adequate protective equipment and then when I am done I would open parenthesis and then I write the full name Ghana Medical Association then I would open a square bracket a square bracket then you put in g m a close the square bracket bring a comma then bring the year 2020 then you close the parenthesis and then you bring your full stop so that is how we do in-text citation for group when you have a group as an as your authors so this one we've looked at ghana medical association so in looking at in-text citation i have given you three ways no sorry four ways so we have when you have either a single author you have two authors you have three or more authors and then when you have a group as your authors there is more we would you would look at that with your lectures in the face to face interaction so now we want to look at um reference which is the reference list or the out text reference what you do after you are done with your write-up you have what we call the re reference list and you provide all the sources you consulted all the cost sources you used in the writing and you do that by uh, organizing the names of the authors in alphabetical order so you organize it alphabetically by using the author's last name so let's look at if you have a single author and you want to reference how you are supposed to do it if you are referencing a single author so you have the last name of the author coming first then you have a comma because here you are producing the full name of the author i said it previously when i started the lecture that when it comes to the referencing or the out text reference we use the full name of the author and this is how we go by it you bring the last name of the author first 
followed by a comma. Then you leave a space, then you write the author's initial of his first name. So we used an example, Mensa, when I started. So let's take it that Mensa's first name is um, Michael. So you are going to have Mensa, comma, then you would bring the initial letter of his name, Michael, which is M, followed by a period, a full stop. Then you open, you leave a space, you open parentheses, then you bring the year of publication. So 2018, then you close the parentheses, then you bring the title of the book. We are looking at a reference of what? A book. Then you bring the title of the book. Then you bring the publisher, the one who published that book or the publishing firm that published the book for the person. So we can have Mensa comma M dot. We open parenthesis 2018. Then the title of our book is the elements of library research. What every student need to know. And then our publisher is University Press. Then after the title of the book, we bring full stop. We bring a space before we bring the University of uh, University Press, which is our publisher. Then we bring another what? Full stop. So that is how we do an out text reference at the end of what? Our write up. Then you want to look at two authors when we are doing an out text reference. Two authors. So in the same way, you list their last name first. Then followed by the letters or the initials of what? Their second names. And then you separate it with what? A comma. So let's take... um. Ewuku and Adams. So you would have Adams, comma. So Adams' first name is Collins. C. You bring a dot. You bring another comma. Then you bring the Appanson. After that, then you bring, you leave a space, you bring Ewuku, comma. Ewuku's first name is Daniel. You bring the D, you bring a dot, you open the parenthesis, then you write 2019. You close it, then you bring the title of the book, full stop, then you bring the publisher. So that is when you are referencing two artists. Two artists. Now let's look at if you are referencing three Arthurs to 20 Arthurs. That means from the number 3 to 20. What you do is that you bring the last name of the authors, just like you are doing when you, we looked at with the first, uh, if you have a single author or if you have two authors. So if you have 3 to 20 Arthurs, you do the same thing. You bring their names by starting with what's their last name followed by the initial then you bring comma so you write everything if it's three you write everybody's name then uh, before the last name would come you make sure that you have your ampersand you have your ampersand so before the last name or the last author's name would come it should be preceded by an ampersand so, for 3 to 20 authors, this is what we are expected to do if we are referencing in the out text reference. Then, if we are referencing an article, with the article, you will still have the author's last name followed by the initial or initials of the other name 
then you have you still use the, the punctuation so after the fe- the author's last name there is a comma when you have one initial there is a dot and then you open a parenthesis but if you have two initials there is a dot a comma the second initial a dot then you open what the parenthesis and then you have the year of publication then the year of publication is in the parenthesis after that you have a period which is a full stop after that you have the title of the article then you have your next full stop then it is followed by the title of the periodical you have a comma then you have the volume number then you open a parenthesis and you have the issue number then a comma you have a space then you have your page number or page numbers so let's look at this example so you have a siama comma is um, first name is daniela so d then we have a dot we open a parenthesis 2015 what is the title of the article the title of the article is adapting historical citation to apa style we have a full stop then in what journal well, or periodical was that article published it was published in journal of broadcasting and electronic media then you have a comma and then you have your volume number as 29 you open a parenthesis let's assume our issue number is four then we close the parenthesis then we have we leave a space and then we have our page and then the page range from 10 to 21 then we bring a full stop we bring a full stop so that is how we reference an article so in looking at the out text reference i have i gave example of how we can reference a book and how we can reference an article in fact we have other ways or other materials that we reference in what uh, the reference list but for the purposes of this lecture i've just looked at how you'd reference a book and how you'd reference what an article the other ones you would look at it with your lecturers in your face to face interaction so we started this lecture by looking at what documentation is and we say it is when you acknowledge the sources you consulted in the writing of your academic work because it is a crime or it is an offense in the academic discourse community to project someone else's work as yours it is what we refer to as what plagiarism so you want to avoid that and at the same time you want to give credibility to your work so you want to consult sources and then the topic you are writing on you want to deepen your understanding of that topic so it's important you consult sources but after that it is very important you acknowledge those you consult by giving them credit or giving them recognition by and then we said because we use the apa documentation style american psychological association documentation style we in this academic discourse community it's uh, emphasized on the use of what the person's last name and the date of what or year of publication in the text and then at the end of the text where we have our reference list you give the full name the title of the material you consulted and the publisher so that is what we have learned this morning
FM. Okay, so you are welcome back to our radio lecture on documentation. To join the lecture, if you have any questions, if you have any contributions, you can call the studio line, which is 050-392-3158. I'll take it again, 050-392-3158. Or you can call 0332320201 and you can send your text message or your WhatsApp message on 050-392-3158. And then those who have joined us from Facebook, you can post your messages on Radio Windy Bay 98.3. FM, and if you've joined us on Twitter, you can go to at Windy Bay 93, sorry, 98.3 FM. So, we are looking at documentation, which is okay. I have a caller on the line. Hello, hello, yeah. Please, you give us your name and the departments from which you are calling from. Okay. Okay. Great from procurement department. Okay. So go ahead with your question. The reference that you talk about, please. Mm -hmm. You say we should use the person last name first. Yes. And the uh, comma. Yes. Then the other name will just. The initials of the other name. So, if yes. the person has just one other name, you bring the initial. So, for example, I said Mensa is Michael. So, Mensa, comma, his name Michael will bring the initial letter M. Then we will bring a dot or a period or a full stop. Then we open a parenthesis and put in the year of publication before we bring the title of either the book or the article. Please, what about if the name is more than two. Oh, okay. Is that the only question or you have another question? That is the question. I okay. Have. So when you have two names, so for instance, I have my uh, uh, Mensa. So after the Mensa and then I bring a comma and Mensa's initial, other initial name is Michael. I bring an M. I bring a full stop or a period. Then I bring what we call the Ampazan. Ampazan. A M P E R S A N D. So I can't show you the symbol from where I see it. So in during your face to face interactions, your lecturers would show you that symbol. So you bring an Ampazan between uh, after the initial of Manson's name Michael, then you bring the other name so let's take it that the other name is menu then you write menu so menu's first name is lawrence so after menu comma then lawrence the initial for lawrence is l you bring a dot which is the period you open a parenthesis to write the year of publication so let's take it that the year of publication is 2021 so we write 2021 then we close the parenthesis so that is that followed by the title of the book or the title if it's an article the title of what the article if it's the book after the title of the book we have the publisher if it's an article after the title of the article you have the name of the periodical or the journal followed by um the a, a comma and then you bring the volume, sorry, the volume number. And then you open a parenthesis and then you write the issue number. Then there is what? A, a full stop or a period. Then you write the publisher. So that is that. Okay. So we looked at documentation and we said it is given 
credit or acknowledging the sources you consulted. And we said in this university, there are several documentation styles, but we use the APA documentation style, which is American Psychological Association documentation style. And with that, we do what we call the in-text citation and then the out-text reference. So the in-text is the acknowledging the sources within your write-up. And then the out text is at the end of your write-up. If it's a project work, if it is a long essay, if it is a thesis, if it's a dissertation, if it is a report, at the end, you, when you are done writing, then you have what we call the reference list. Then that is what we refer to as the out text, out of the text you have written. Then you bring... If, uh, the the full name of the author followed by the title of the if it's a book and then the publisher okay so we have another caller on the line hello hello madam yes please give us your name and then the departments from which you are calling from um please my name is bright Suman. Okay. From the mathematics department. Okay, so Bright, go ahead with your question. Um, please, in the in-text citation, yes. um, where we have more than two um, actors that we want to acknowledge, Yes. there we learn that uh, we don't have to bring the last names of all the artists, but we will have to use one and we use the ether comma then the year of fabrication okay so, in my presentation i said that when you have two authors you bring the, more, both more of than them two. sorry it's more than two oh, okay three or more okay mm -hmm. yes please yes so, so go ahead. um we write the um the last name of one the first author the, so on the book anytime you pick okay. a book or you pick an article you would okay. see a name coming first. So you pick the first name. So the first okay. author. Uh -huh. okay. okay, that's and, what I wanted to know. Okay, you pick the first okay. author. And then you add the ital to it. Okay. So you are okay. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. You're welcome. Yes, so the call studio lines are 050 392 three one five eight and then zero three three two three two zero two zero one and for whatsapp and text messages you can use zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and if you have joined us from on facebook live you can post your message on radio windy bay 98 Point three FM, and if you are on Twitter, it is at Windy Bay ninety eight point three FM. So keep your messages coming. Call if you don't understand anything. If you have any contribution, join the radio lecture. Hello, I have a caller on the line. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, please your name and your department. Please, my name is Martin Mbwabe. Sorry? Mathematics Department. Your name again? Martin. Martin. Okay, Martin, yeah. go ahead. Please, madam, what, uh, in quotation, what if you get information on the internet? How will you do? Okay. So, when you get information on the internet, let's take it that you get either a book or an article on the internet you do the same quotation that is you bring everything i have taught you bring the person's full name by writing the last name first and then followed by the initial and then with the punctuations the punctuations are very important so after the last name there is a comma 
if the initial is one you bring the the initial you bring a period that's a full stop you open a parenthesis you write the year you write the title of the book the publisher and then you give us the web page line that you picked the you retrieved the information from so you can have something like http uh, dot uh, then slash doi dot org slash that so that is how you reference an online information and okay. i left this out because i know that your face to face in your face to face interactions your lecturers would help you get a clearer picture of all these okay so Martin, thank you very much i hope you are thank okay you. okay yes okay okay hello we have another call on the line hello hello okay the call line is zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and then you have zero three three two three two zero two zero one and then for whatsapp and text messages you have zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and then for facebook those on the facebook page you have radio windy bay 98.3 fm and then those who have joined us on twitter you have at windy bay 98.3 fm okay so i have another caller on the line hello oh, good morning good morning my name is Emmanuel from Mathematics Department. Mathematics. Please, the name again. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Okay, Emmanuel, go ahead. Um, please, what about if the book you are, referenc uh, you are referencing doesn't have a date of publication? Okay. So, if the book is not having a date of publication, after the name of the author, whether it's an author or it's Arthur's, you open the parenthesis like how we open the parenthesis to put in if it's 2018 then you write n in small letter dot then you write d small letter then you bring dot which is full stop after it then you close the parenthesis so the n d means not dated not dated so that's what we do when the material you are using is not having any year or date of what publication okay yes so today we are looking at documentation which is acknowledging the sources we consult and gather information for our academic writing and we are saying that it is very important to duly acknowledge any source that you consult in the writing of any of your academic essays because you want to give credibility to your work and then at the same time you want to avoid what plagiarism and we said that in this discourse community we use the apa documentation style which is the american psychological association documentation style and you have the in-text citation and the out-text citation in the in-text it is all the citations you do that in uh, uh, that is given credit to the sources within your write-up and then at the end of your write-up what you do is what we call the out test which is also referred to as what the reference list so the call the studio call lines are zero five zero three nine two three one five eight zero three three two three two zero two zero one if you want to text or whatsapp you have zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and then for facebook for facebook there is okay i have a caller on the line hello hello good morning good morning um please your document, name 
your name and your okay process. my name is Eunice from the procurement department oh, okay yes it's confusing looking at the the index and the like this one the out um, yes and the, the direct quotation the summary and the paraphrasing okay i don't see the differences in them okay so you don't see the difference between quotation paraphrase and then summary the summary okay. so i'll take it so again and then mm. this this um documentation i think it should be face to face interaction i think yes we'll we are going to have a face to face interaction this is just to help you to start reading on it before next week we have our face-to-face interaction so you see now that you are having these challenges i expect you to do a lot of reading on it so that you would have relevant questions in preparation for your face-to-face interaction so i will take the summary the direct quote and the paraphrasing for you so thank you thank you you're welcome eunice so we in our previous discussions in uh, academic writing, we said that you have to consult sources. Now you have consulted the sources by using your reading skills. You've gone to do a lot of reading. You have extracted the relevant information. You've been given an assignment. You are supposed to use that relevant information you have extracted in the writing of your essay how do you incorporate that information you have gathered in the writing of your essay this is where you use the three referencing skills which is direct quotes paraphrasing or summary and when we talk about direct quotes we are saying that our direct quote is the exact representation of words and punctuations that means you copy the ten directly you don't change anything you don't add anything to it you don't take anything out you say it the way the author says it and then because they are not your words you put them in what quotation marks and then at the same time you add the page number from which you picked that information from then when it comes to paraphrasing it is the restatement of the information you extracted or the materials you have gathered but this time you are not using the exact words or punctuations of what the writer you are using your own words but the most important thing is that make sure that you do not change the original meaning of the information you extracted then we have a summary and summary is a brief so the key word there is that you should be brief and you should be precise which means you should be exact and how can you be exact in summary you pick only the salient or the key ideas you do not add details so that's the difference between summary and paraphrase with summary and paraphrase you are in both of them you are using your own words but when it comes to paraphrase you can add details but when it comes to summary you cannot add details you should be as brief as possible by only stating or restating what the salient or the key issues so that is the difference so when it comes to a uh, summary the significance is on how short your summarized version is it is very important so you do away with all the details all the examples all the illustrations in summary it is not needed so these three referencing skills they are how you would incorporate let's say you are writing we are talking about uh, the development of what a paragraph so you have your topic sentence you've stated what you are going to discuss in that paragraph now to support that focus that the topic sentence is projecting you want to quote an authority which is the information you have gathered so you can decide to use either what 
a direct quotation or you can decide to use what summary or you can decide to use what paraphrase so these are the three referencing skills that we use to incorporate the information or the material we have gathered or extracted from our reading in the writing of what our academic essays okay so the call lines are zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and you have zero three three two three two zero two zero one and then for whatsapp and text message you have zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and then if you've joined us on facebook you can post your message on radio windy bay 98.3 fm and then on twitter you have at windy bay 98.3 fm question from Joshua from the Department of Management Education and his question is if an author has editions several editions how are you going to write the reference so you do the same thing at the what we talked about so let's look at it you have the author's last name followed by a comma then the initial of his first name so after that you have a period which is a full stop you open the parenthesis so and then you write the year of publication then the title of the book after you are done with the title of the book you open another parenthesis and you tell us the particular edition so is it the first edition so you write first then you write you leave a space and write ed in small letters so if it's the second edition you are using you write second you leave a space you write ed and then you close the parentheses and then you bring what the year of publication so that is what you do i am sure you would have further examples in the face-to-face -face interaction okay so we want to look at another question 
Um, the name of the person is Wilfred Inin from ICT department and his question is, is it necessary to bring the page number? Yes, it is necessary to bring a page number if you have done direct quotation. That means you have used the exact words of the author. You want to bring the page so that anytime your reader wants to make any reference, I can go to that page and look up for the information. So anytime you do direct quotation, you have to bring the page. So that is that. Then we want to take another message. Want to take another message? Okay, so we have Theresa Mensa from the Department of Management Education and sh she wants me to go over the groups the, or having a group as your authors or authors. So the groups can, in the example of groups, we have corporations, can either be a corporation, an association or an, a, a non-governmental organization or a governmental what organization so i gave an example that we are using an association like the ghana medical association so in using the ghana medical association we have gathered an information from them and we are using it so in the in-text citation after in using the narrative format i would have something like this so i'm giving an example ghana medical association then you open a parenthesis and then you put in the initials of the ghana medical association or the abbreviated form of the ghana medical association so jma then in capital letters then you bring a comma and then the year of publication so my year of publication is 2020 and what is the information i have gathered from them has urged so the ghana medical association 2020 has urged the government to provide adequate personal protective equipment to all health facilities in the country now if you are using the parenthetical way in your in-text, that means you would bring the information first before you bring the name or, yes, the name of the, so from where you are gathering the source from and you are using the group, you would have, the government has been urged to provide adequate personal protective equipment to all health facilities in the country. When you finish with that, then you open a parenthesis and then you bring Ghana medical association then you bring a comma then you open a square parenthesis or a square bracket then you bring in the abbreviated form of uh, the ghana medical association which would be gma in capital letters you close your square box bring a comma or the square bracket bring a comma and then bring your year of publication 2020 close the parenthesis and then you bring a full stop so that is how it is done i am sure because you can't get a picture of what i am talking about when we have or we have the face we get to have the face to face interaction you get a clear picture of what we are discussing then i have Abigail Makusapon from Applied Linguistics. And she said, please, I did not get the clear picture of the in-text citation. Okay. So with the in-text citation, it is uh, acknowledging your sources within the text. That means the essay that you are writing. Inside the essay, you want to acknowledge the sources, give credit to the information the owners of the information you are using so that is what i'm saying that you can go about it in two ways you can provide the information first 
then you bring the name of what the author at the end of the information you have provided so if you bring the information first so for example if i have an information like uh, research suggests that reading is very good for students and that is the information i got from mensa after list uh, stating this information i will open a parenthesis so that's the in-text citation i'll open a parenthesis if you don't understand the parenthesis you open a bracket i'll open a parenthesis then i'll write the name of the source by writing the last name in parenthesis we use or in in-text citation we use only the writer's last name and then the year of what publication so uh, research suggests that reading is very good for students it's i got that source from mensa so i open the parenthesis i write mensa i bring a comma then i bring the year that mensa published that work 2018 i close parenthesis or i close the bracket then i put what a full stop at the end of what the bracket so that is one another way by which i you can go about it is to bring the name of the utter first so i can say mensa then i open a parenthesis and put the year of publication in it 2018 i close the parenthesis and then what did he say uh, suggest that reading is very good for what students so that is the example or that is how we go about doing what in text citation okay so i have a message from isaac nubawonu from the mathematics department and his question is whether it is always important to bring authors in the narrative format for okay so i said you can either use the narrative format or the parenthetical format yes you can interchange it as a writer it depends on your style of writing and then the information you are providing in your academic writing so at a point in time based on what you are writing you can decide to go about it using the narrative format or you use what the parenthetical format so i hope i have been able to address your concern yes uh the person did not provide his or her name but the question is is it always important to reference yourself uh, your work sorry of course that is why we are learning documentation and we said that it is a great offense if you use someone's work in academia or in an academic discourse community and you do not give credit to the person's material information it can either even be a picture uh, uh, an information a fact anything if you do not credit give credit to the person it's an offense and that offense is what we refer to as what plagiarism and if you plagiarize someone's work let's take it that at the end of your stay here and you get to level 400 and then you write a long essay or a project work and it is detected that you have plagiarized anyone's work you would not be given a certificate you would be asked to go back you would be asked to go back to do the work again you'll be sanctioned your work will be withdrawn so it is always important to uh, reference or to acknowledge or to give credit to any material or source or information you gather from what any authority or any other author okay so uh, benedict amensa from management science department wants to know the difference between documentation and plagiarism okay so documentation is acknowledgement of the sources you consulted in the writing of your academic essay 
so let's take it that you visited the library you did some reading you gathered some information and you are going to use that information in the writing of what any academic essay because it is not your work you have not carried out any research someone did that work and you have gone to gather the information from there when you use it in your write-up you are to tell your readers that this information is coming from mensa or it is coming from adams or it's coming from Ewuku, or it's coming from stevens it's coming from daniel so that is what acknowledgement where you give credit to the honors of the information you have gathered and you are using in what your academic writing however when it comes to plagiarism plagiarism is when you go to the library you read you said ah this is a very uh, interesting information it will help me with my assignment then you gather the information then you use it in your writing then you did not bring mensa's name you don't acknowledge that this particular work is something that was done by mensa it was done by Eku, but Eku, sorry but you project it like it is yours then that is what plagiarism and we are saying that it is an offense in any academic discourse community and we want to avoid that that is why it is very important or necessary for us to always acknowledge the sources we gather information from so you are advised that anytime you are reading take notes of the names of the author the year of publication the title of the book and then if you are retrieving it from online make sure that you have the website page and everything down okay so i have a caller on the line Hello, madam. Yeah, good. Uh, um, yeah, your name and then your department, please. This is Bright Isuma from the Mathematics Department again. So your name? Bright Isuma. Okay, Bright. Yes, your question. Um, please, um, in some books, uh, you find out that in the text, the address has been acknowledged there. But, yes, uh, they provide reference of the at the end of the whole um text yes so want to find out is that one to um like is there any hard first read that when um in the text you have acknowledged them you must also provide a reference yes um i said that in my presentation that when it comes to the apa documentation style we have two things that you are required to do if you are using the APA documentation style. You do the in-text citation. The in-text is what we call citation. Then you do the out-text, which we call referencing. So the out-text is referencing. Then the in-text is what? Citation. So at the end of your work, you are supposed to have what we call the reference list. And then you list all the sources you used in the text even though you've acknowledged them in the text you we still want to see it in the reference list so you don't miss any one out you make sure you list everything you have within your text and in listing them the difference here is that within the text you only gave the person's last name and what the year of publication but in the reference list now you are going to give us the full name of the author and what do you do? You bring his last name, the initials of his other name. If he has two or more, you bring the initials of his other name. Then you provide us with the title of that material. And then the publisher. So who does that work? You provide it for us. If it's an article, you would provide us with the title of the article the title of the journal that the article is in and then you provide us with the volume number the issue number and then the page from which that article is situated in in the journal article so yes it is important when we are using and we, I, I have please emphasize on this that in the university which is university of education Winneba, our 
documentation style is the APA documentation style. So we have in-text citation and then we have the out-text referencing which you would provide what we call the reference list. And then you do it in alphabetical order using the last names of what? The artists. It is important. So you start from A all the way to Z. Okay. So uh, call line is zero five zero three nine two three one five eight zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and then we have zero three three two three two zero two zero one and then for whatsapp and text messages we have zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and if you have joined us on facebook you can post your message on radio windy bay 98.3 fm and then if you've joined us by twitter it is at windy bay 98.3 fm okay so today our topic of discussion was or is or was on what documentation we looked at documentation and we said it is uh, the process where you acknowledge all the sources that you consulted and used in the writing of what any of your academic essays so you want to give recognitions to the owners of the information or the materials you gathered to use in what you're writing and you do that by providing their last name and then the year of what publication so that would be within the text and then out of the text you would provide the writer or the author's full name the title of the book okay i have a caller on the line hello uh, hello good morning madam good morning please your name madam, and the department I'm, you are calling from i am set from the mathematics department okay i did not get the name please can you repeat it again i am set set okay yes, set. madam mm -hmm. uh, madam please i would like to know with respect to the comms course mm. in writing mm. uh, how do we um cite like for example you've been asked to Maybe give differences between um, note taking and note writing. Okay. And you know that you read it from uh, the the Com Skills book. Manual. How do you yeah? Okay. How do you cite this? Or okay. maybe you are doing psychology. You have been given a book by Professor Nabi. You read okay. it. You know the page number, and you have to use those thing to help you in writing how do you cite it okay do you write it like that or you have to do citation as you are saying okay so thank you very much for your question if you look at the course manual that you have we have authors on it we have about six authors on it so i mentioned that when you have a book and you have three to uh, 20 authors you write what the name of in in text you write the name of the first author so for the course manual the first author we have here is abna abokuma esimeni so in text you write esimeni etal for in text esimeni etal then you open after you bring then you bring uh, uh, the etal you bring comma you open a parenthesis you write the year of publication you close you write the title of the book and then you give us the publisher so that is how you would um uh, am i saying in text sorry so you in in text you would bring a simony and then you bring the year and then you say what a simony etal said then when we come to the out text you are done with the work and you want to reference now here you are not going to write a simeni etal you are going to write a simeni comma 
her first name the initial is a you bring a dot you bring comma then you bring another a you bring a dot you bring comma then you bring a comma and then you list all you go through all the six names here you are supposed to write all the six names so when you get to the fifth person amu mensa then you make sure that you bring the ampazan sign before you bring the last name a paj then you open your parentheses and then you bring what the year of publication then after that you close your parentheses then you bring a dot a period then you bring the title of the book which would become skills uh, course manual then you tell us the publisher so you open the book and you look for the person who published this book so this book we have pedadu ventures as what the publisher so you do that so that is what we do so even if you know the lecturer and the lecturer has given you a book there is an author on uh, who has written that book so you are supposed to use that author when you are doing either the in-text citation or the out text reference Okay, so so soon we have come to the end of our radio lecture for today and I want to thank you very much for taking part in your various hostels and um, hall of residence for tuning in to listen and especially for sending questions to make the lecture an interactive one we are going to continue with this interaction when we have our face-to-face -face interaction so if you don't understand anything i would encourage you to do a lot more reading put your questions down and then when we meet during our face-to-face -face interaction we'll help to clarify everything for you so stay tuned and enjoy your day So that is it for you right here, 98.3 FM. And as expected, we say many, many thanks to you, Miss uh, Yvonne Dezo from the Department of Communication and Media Studies, especially doing justice to the topic at hand this very morning. Remember, it's got to do with documentation one, like she mentioned, for all those that stay tuned in and contributed to this marvelous experience we say god richly bless you so we look forward to having madam yvonne Dezo back here in the studios as far as our future broadcast for communication sales radio lecture happens to be on right here at 98.3 fm still to come have it in advance don't forget since we've wrapped up this week's session of the toilets of radio lectures come monday that is 22nd March 2021 will be to all of our 300 students uh, that are studying the course EDCR 242 Trends in Education and School Management in Ghana between 6.30am and 7.30am Remember the topic meaning of communication and types of communication will be the mission for our lecturer Mr. Eric Ofosu Jamana coming from the Department of Educational Foundations University of Education Winneba so once more to all of our 300 students come Monday 22nd March 2021 between 6.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. Remember your radio lecture will be on the topic meaning of communication and types of communication to be handled by Mr. Eric Ofosu Jamana from the Department of Educational Foundations University of Education Winneba. Later on, uh, as far as that day is concerned, between 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., we call it Prime Time Counseling Session on Radio, Dab Nuggets for Life, Kankati, the Counseling Center, University of Education, Winneba. 
we'll be bringing to you the topic stress think about that stress is going to be handled by dr patricia mousy amos coming from the counseling center university of education Winneba. so that is it for you we're back in a bit to resume traditional programming remember it's going to be news review sport to be added and then that very one i call it a surprise package before we press the tip exactly 10 find you over to rebecca robertson for everything Workers Avenue plus your land big right here on Radio Windy Bay. A couple of programs to come your way. Don't flick your down. Even as we negotiate this turn and take a real comeback in a bit right here on 98.3 FM. Stick and stay. Another one. What else? Yeah. It's a beautiful brand new day. Yes, there we go again. The moment has come for you to become the 21st century lady, gentleman, and a child you have always yearned to become. All made possible. Kind Ketsi Mina Cosmetics. You came for a good artistic makeup for your wedding, birthday party, graduation ceremony. I mean, all events? Then fall on Mina Cosmetics for all your makeups. We also have wig caps, all types of wig, and head hair, Mongolian hair, and Peruvian hair. Among all, is your delightful super scented perfumes. Oh, God. It makes you smell good. So my beautiful ladies, there are a lot of beautiful handbags and dressing bags to make your dressing on point and all makeup products are available. Guys, guys, and all barbering shops, full on Mino Cosmetics for all your barbering shop products and items. So mommy, daddy, get all your baby products from Mino Cosmetics. Mino Cosmetics is a wholesale shop and so all items are of wholesale prices. Mino Cosmetics will work from Monday to Saturday between the hours of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mino Cosmetics, we are located in Winneba Roman School, close to Don Bosco JHS. So open your mobile power. Effa Cosmetics, what dear? And if we need your Mino Cosmetics, and I sell per week, and I a re, and I handbags, and I inquire my mobile team in a uniform from dear. And if we need a chair, Mino Cosmetics, I feel girls, girls, so open your mobile week and I toss my name in the media and no one Mino Cosmetics. A few baby products so a shahon ma say chim and it is a woman is a mini mini na a wholesale prices a bono mata to see who we de and chamu cra from two for so zero five zero six nine six five 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 and now zero two six six three five three seven two two and now zero two zero six zero two seven one three three and now zero five four three zero six six zero zero one Mino Cosmetics You and me together forever See your baby, it's the other baby Jojo, Jojo I didn't give you praise on both Oh yeah, bone massage Healing without medication Are you suffering from chronic pain, stress, headache, anxiety, muscle aches, menstrual cramps? Look no further. We offer Swedish massage, therapeutic massage, prenatal and postnatal massage, Thai massage, foot and hand massage. For all your relaxation and pain relieving therapy, contact us on 0540 0540-729237. 0540-729237. Bob Massage, the only massage therapist on GAW campus. There are stories of those who did it and those who were supposed to. Stories of how to get things done and where to get them done. Stories of who to reach out to, where, when and how. On this platform, every information concerning your well-being as a student is brought to bear and the perspectives that matter are thoroughly discussed. We knock on the doors of appropriate authorities and probe into issues, both past and present, with the hopes of finding the perfect synchronization to cushion your academic and social life within the university community. Your voices are heard, texts evaluated and concerns attended to. 
So on Tuesdays between 7 and 9 p.m., tune in to Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM for a comprehensive discussion on student and campus-related issues. This is Campus File. Radio Windy Bay 98.3 MHz brings to you an informative and educative program, My Department. My Department highlights the activities of the various departments in the University of Education, Winneba. This program brings to you various segments which include interview with the HODs, roundtable discussion with some lecturers and the student corner where we will interact with some student leaders, not leaving your take, a time where the phone lines will be activated for your calls comments and concerns my department indeed is a must listen to program tune in to radio windy bay 98.3 megahertz this and every wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m and let's take a stroll through the various departments on campus coronavirus covid19 the Director of Health Services, University Education Winnie by UW, has the following COVID-19 precautionary measures to be followed by all students. Before the lecture, temperature check at the gate or block entrance. Sanitize your hands before entry into the lecture hall. Keep your face mask securely on. Sit a distance from the next student. Pick up teaching and learning materials from one point and avoid persons sharing these items in class. Utilize all online materials available to the class. During the lecture, avoid sharing or touching items of others. Sanitize your hands before and after using toilet facilities. Avoid shaking hands or hugging other students. Keep your face mask on throughout the lecture. Only briefly remove masks to eat or drink as needed and red marks. After the lecture, avoid stampede situations. Avoid standing close together in groups while chatting. Use the break period between lectures to sanitize your hands and immediate environment as needed. Report any unusual symptoms you may be experiencing to a nearby health facility. All COVID-19 protocols should be observed in group discussions. Keep a healthy lifestyle at all times. This announcement is by the Directory of Health Services, UEW. Windy Bay. 98.3 FM Extra, extra, read all about it I'm talking front page story all over the world It shook up men, women, boys and girls The headlines read If you want to be rich Then you better make sure that you got your shit oh, come on Rock 
wrong Said you gotta do something better nothing at all Cause there's people you desire People you admire They wanna go places where you get too tired We want the truth about what's been going on So we chatter chatter gossip on our telephone When our time is running out We ain't got the answer So like we say, it's Angora, it's Friday, TGIF. Exactly, 70 minutes past the mark of H90.3 FM. So like you've heard greatly, a couple of seconds gone past. Or to get in tune with everything on the front pages, the center spread, the back pages. And then beyond that, everyone has got to do with online stories as well, coupled with other ones that will come through, particularly that very one we crave from you. It's about you being part of this very journey. Don't forget, we are on this journey together. Let us know what you make of the very new trending, whether locally, nationally, and even beyond. Remember the WhatsApp platform 0503-923158. 0503-923158. And then on Facebook, it's about Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. Have we heard about it? A lot more going on within the fold of our prestigious University of Education Winneba. Particularly, okay, let me not really let it out right here. I'm joined by Kwame Anamua. Then behind us, a very solid team, like I told you early on. Don't forget, Apia Kobe Jones, AK Kimba Tuka, as executive producer. Producer happens to be Stephen Osei Ajeman. Alongside uh, Killer Bismarck Apia, that is Mr. Ebo Cute. Technical man on duty helping us to enable you to hear us crystal clear. On the Dow, 98.3 FM happens to be the Midas Touch coming from Albert Barbentin Ghani, our technical head. And of course, you that special listener, you make it happen every now and then. And I have come to learn in this job, never say never and never too late to really make it count. So right about now, remember, as we fold our sleeves and get to work, it's about one thing I tell you this very morning. Okay, so like it goes, it's about that small positive step. Remember, your direction and momentum are at least as consequential as your location. That is why taking a small positive step can make such a big positive difference. And there's some little something you can do today that will improve your life tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, not only will you experience the reward, for your initiative, you will be inspired to add to it. As soon as you slack one improvement that is on top of another, you'll get to know that a lot more will come through on that score. And for sure, as that momentum comes in view, that can change your whole frame of reference for the better and given power to perpetuate itself. Suddenly, the old doubts and excuses lose their negative influence. You become oriented toward action and improvement rather than procrastination and mediocrity. When you experience yourself moving forward, you're able to notice a radically expanded set of possibilities. Remember, action, momentum, and enthusiasm. Once more, action, momentum, and enthusiasm begin to feed off each other. In some, it all begins with a small positive step. And are you willing to take that small positive step right about now, right here on the Ultimate in Campus Radio? So on the wings of those inspirational thoughts, we drive ourselves into that beautiful world called News Review right here. 
98.3 FM like I really on how to do with a job with uh, Kwame Anamwa this very morning. So Kwame, a uh, very good morning to you at uh, Double Sided Experience. First up, good morning, Marche. How are you doing? Mm. Adum Nkote, Adum Nkote, the endless grace from above. That is what is justifying our inclusion as part of the living this very morning. So it goes to the man above. Yeah. Okay, so what is really making the mark from your front? Well, we have uh, the newspapers, uh, the Daily Graphic, and the Ghanaian Times. Mm-hmm. And the uh, Daily Graphic is talking also uh, a wonderful good morning to our cherished listeners out there. Uh, the Daily Graphic is talking about uh, maintaining leadership, speaker inspires graphic. So at Ghana Yearbook Launch, uh, it's here. <laughs> It's here, uh, the Speaker of Parliament, um, Alban Kings for Sumana Bagmin, uh, launching the Ghana Yearbook 2021. And the uh, double track offers hope to senior high schools as first year student report. More suspect busted in baby stealing syndicate, investigators life threatened. Ghanaian Rwandan hospitality entrepreneurs to collaborate. Uh, those are the front page. And now to the back page. Census scheduled for June 27 and so Kofodia Circuit Court A to go down for new complex. Okay, so this is what the paper is telling us. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so the middle or center spread of the paper uh, is dedicated to the year 2021 book launch. So when you go to the you go to the african uh, yes african section the paper uh, we have african leaders pay glowing tribute to late tanzanian president As my expected. yes my my body body yeah, man, i have a surprise for you on the show this morning i hope you're ready for it oh okay we should be taking a trip to Dar es Salaam. Oh, okay. think so okay uh, i i love a music that was composed for him <laughs> by uh, during his campaign Mabufuli my was now. my man he's the <laughs> only african president who can say his mind the rest are all something else okay so <laughs> um we have hi- him here with uhuru kenyatta uh from kenya congratulating him on his uh re-election so the the various messages sent by the Leaders on the continent are here. We have from Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Burundi, mm-hmm. Malawi, Rwanda, United States, Tanzania, opposition leader. Uh, you see, during mm-hmm. the week, I mm-hmm. think on man- Monday, okay. yes, uh, I was reading uh, elsewhere mm. and uh, I saw one opposition leader in Tanzania saying they are looking for a day to announce his death. Can you imagine? Yes. Because this guy, they, they, <laughs> it, it presumed that he died long ago. Hmm. And you see, we, we spoke about it here, I think, on Monday. Mm-hmm. People who were asking for his whereabouts were arrested for saying where is the president and that they can't say it, it's no good news and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But two days later, the guy died. And when, when his, the n- announcement of his death came, I heard the guy, I read the guy say, I said, wow. So the guy knew. And he said well, he has... He has, the he has uh, message uh, information that the guy has died, but mm. the government were trying to manipulate it. And then I said, Okay, mm. oh my <laughs> but and mm-hmm. two days later, there was this announcement from the vice president, Her Excellency mm-hmm. Samia Suluhu Hassan. She's expected or has she been sworn in? Yes, uh, the yes, yes. Uh, um, on, 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 we are marching on. Mm. This is what we are looking for. We don't say the men should die mm. so that we take the, the feminine gender. No, will no take we over. don't say we don't say so, but gradually we will boot them out because <laughs> they have nothing good to offer the continent of Africa. <laughs> and so, uh, I know Suluhu will not, Samia uh, Hassan. yes, will mm. not disappoint. I'll take your thoughts on her as the show travels this morning, most especially. Do I say? How many days gone past for us having celebrated the International Women's Day? Oh, it just, uh, it was, uh, the guy, the announcement of his death came on mm. 17th. Mm. Uh, and so barely under two eight. weeks ago. Yes, okay. no, it was just nine days ago. <laughs> yeah, so. Mm. Um, Let's see how okay. that goes. So the Ghanaian Times, 449 Ghanaians receive 
COVID-19 vaccine jab, um, the jabs, uh, so Kokwa Jimamenu is here, government to construct five interchanges in Ashanti region. Okay, and um, Yoko naps three more baby harvesters. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Still and like the like ah, issue. The harvest. Mm-hmm. Minister assesses work on four housing projects and the uh, Catholic relief services contribute to contribution to development loaded hmm. in fact um always instrumental oh uh, yes yes uh, the Catholic church in ghana uh, when it comes to our services. health front mm-hmm. they lead more than the government that is mm-hmm. no yes there's no truth undisputable about it. yes because when you go to uh, asin fusu mm-hmm. which is a district capital there is no government hospital there but we have a Catholic hospital that is seven in fact that road from 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 Abro Dunqua, even to uh, after Central Region, New Edubiasi area, they all come to Asin Fosu to assess uh, healthcare at the St. Francis Xavier mm-hmm. uh, Hospital. Mm-hmm. You go to Bremene Sigma, Bremene Sigma is, is the, the referral center mm-hmm. for most eye diseases in both Central, Western, Greater Accra, Volta, whatnot. They all go there. There's no government hospital there. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you go, to, there are, uh, it, they are countless. Go to Mankesim, Macy, uh, Women's Hospital. Mm-hmm. Go to Bato, go to <laughs> Hohe. Enormous. <laughs> so when I say, go to Apam, mm. the St. Luke Catholic Hospital. Not so far from yes, yes. Winneba. So, uh, the uh, the Catholic Church, uh, we, can't, we can't underestimate their contribution to mm. the mm. development of Ghana. This is what we are looking for mm-hmm. churches to do, not... Uh, mm. Uh, those who only see evil things, they can't sit and think because they, do, they lack the ability or the capacity to think. Mm-hmm. They can't do anything than always seeing evil and telling us what is coming in the next day. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So these are uh, what are trending. So I captured from your front. Yes. Okay, maybe just a quick run through a number of those we have here for now. Since you'll be taking a big dive into the other ones, notable ones we come to as far as online stories are concerned the minority happens to be questioning agenda one uh, one one that's budget can uh, build 88 district seven regional hospitals so they are having concerns as to what government sees as uh, arguably the biggest project ever to be conducted if not uh, undertaken as far as the health sector of our nation uh, Ghana is concerned on that very platform as well. Beyond that very one, we are told a lot more will be coming through as to the perspective of the Trade Union Congress because according to them, government can take a unilateral decision on wages and salary for public workers. The concerns of wages and salaries have come into focus most especially after the reading of the budget not so long uh, go a bit to do with COVID experience this morning. We're told Ghana's records uh, two new COVID 19 variant expect call for immediate action. So, more of red alert, like the indication happened to be coming through from that front as well. We'll be getting you the details uh, later, right here on the Dow 98.3 FM. Beyond that, very one as well, like uh, Anna Moore mentioned something in the region of babies and all of that. A very troubled development, I'd have to say, uh, befalling that is uh, the very community, Gomwa Nyanyano. I guess not so far from Winneba. It concerns mm-hmm. a certain 10 mm-hmm. months mm-hmm. old baby. We'll be getting the details as to our uh, listeners are concerned this morning. Quickly, Kwame, let me get to you for the details. Okay, so um, for the information of our listeners, mm-hmm. uh, there is an accident uh, just here at Ochreko around the mm. uh, Mustafa Plus. Mm-hmm. So those go in show. Uh, SI is restrained. Yes. Great sense of caution. Okay, so uh, let me begin with the daily graphic mm-hmm. uh, at Ghana yearbook launch maintain leadership speaker inspires graphic the speaker of parliament all bankings for suman abagwin has urged the graphic communications group limited to maintain its leadership role in the media industry to help deepen the democratic credentials of the country quote graphic has been a market leader in the media industry over a 
prolonged period because a strong brand you have developed over the years. A media brand that upholds freedom of expression through professionalism and objectivity on all its platforms, mm-hmm. he said. Mr. Bagwin made the remarks when he launched the Ghana Yearbook 2021, which is published annually by the GCGL at the Alisa Hotel in Accra yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Ghana Yearbook 2021 provides an overview of the important happenings in the various sectors of the country in the previous year. The publication started in the 1950s as a value addition pro- product of the GCGL and its popularity grew through to the 1960s before it stopped in the 1970s. Mr. Bagwin said the GCGL's position as a leader in the media space was because of its never-ending innovation and the determination to stay relevant through the various stages of media evolution, both past and present. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so um, let's do other stories. So we go okay. So um, we go to the health front. There's an article. Mm-hmm. Um, World Oral Health Day. Okay. Uh, yes, good smile is beauty to all. Uh, yes, that's what the paper has captured here. Uh, then we go to. We go to um, the page 18 uh, of the, uh, that's the political column of the paper. I have not announced presidential bid. That's Dr. Afri Yakutu. The Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usu Afri Yakutu, has said he has not announced his bid for the flag bearer position of the new patriotic party. He has therefore described as mischievous information making the round that he held a meeting with party executives in the Ashanti region to announce his bid for the flag bearer position of the party. A statement issued by the minister yesterday said the narrators, for reasons best known to them, mischievously sought to court public disaffection for my person by making outrageous claims. Making reference to the MPP's constitution, he said nominations were yet to be open for interested candidates to announce their intention to contest for any position in the party. It is therefore unfortunate for anyone to seek to create the impression that I held a meeting to announce my bid for the flag bearership position of the party. Mm-hmm. So that's a... Uh, uh, the Tarusu Afri Yakutu that he's, he has not said anything. That okay. Uh, yes. Mm. There's something more yes, coming. He, he that had point. fever, so he went to Kumasi to rest. <laughs> he cannot rest from the fever in Accra. Mm. So he went to Kumasi mm. to rest. And mm. people are trying to see Ghana everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> people are trying to force words down his throat. Okay. Yes. Okay. Remove political hats. Mm-hmm. Work as citizens. Minister. So that's coming from the Upper West Regional Minister. The Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, has asked all departmental heads in the region to remove their political hats and work as a team to ensure the smooth development of the region. He said the Upper West region was a safe haven for tourism and investment, which could only be harnessed through hard work and the commitment of departmental heads and its citizens to attract the needed investment. Dr. Sally gave the advice during a meeting with department head in the region mm. to outline his vision for the development of the area mm-hmm. as he resumes office to serve a second four-year term mm-hmm. to help execute the programs and projects of the NPP. The regional minister warned that heads of department who would use their position to indulge in politics would face consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy, he, he's uh, somebody who says a mm-hmm. fantabulous guy. Uh, you see, that region is very, very tab- It's a turbulent one. No one lasts more than uh, uh, four years or three years two or four years no one no, none, none of the ministers had ever lasted like he has mm-hmm. and uh, it's all boils down to his approach mm-hmm. this guy he's a teacher so you know how teachers do their things mm-hmm. he goes to all the camps you see when you go to the upper west you see there are climbers you have mpp camp you have ndc camp and even the parties where the, there are they have various camps mm-hmm. it also exists but this guy will go to the MPP to talk to them. Mm-hmm. He will go to the NDC to talk to them. Mm-hmm. And so he, he he won the hearts of many. Irrespective uh, of... Yes, uh, yes, yes. After he was uh, 
uh, commission to serve Good again he, he posted on facebook and i told him that we are watching you mm -hmm. uh, you see because of what what he did in the past uh, people were not some people were not so much happy with him mm -hmm. his own party so mm -hmm. and they were asking that uh, the president should sack him mm -hmm. but the president sitting in Accra, knowing what hafiz has done decided to bring him again and uh, I know he will not disappoint some of us. Mm -hmm. Not that I worship with him, but his <laughs> leadership <laughs> style impresses me a lot. He doesn't discriminate. So you happen to be a secret admirer? I He knew. And <laughs> it, I, it, it is not a secret. Hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> his leadership style, he approaches everybody. He doesn't say because you belong to NPP, so mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with you as NPP. No. It's about party he is working as a regional minister. Okay. He's not working as NPP minister. Mm. He's not overseeing NPP guys in mm -hmm. Upper West. Mm -hmm. He's overseeing everybody in the Upper West region. Mm -hmm. And mind you, not everybody belongs to a party mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. So I like the way he goes about it. Once elections come and go, we need to put all those politics no, and you see, stuff like before, that behind before, us. Even before during, and get during. more unified for the national cause. Hafiz wasn't mm. doing what others were doing. Mm. He was not divisive. Mm. Well, maybe because I said from afar, but if he does, I will know. So you would say for sure he's showing the best way forward. I tell you, that's why ministry. that's why some of us, we were praying that the president should bring him again mm -hmm. because he was a unifier. Lord this is what we are looking for not mm -hmm. others he, mm -hmm. he doesn't just get up and talk mm -hmm. you can't you know half his mm -hmm. he doesn't have that trait in him mm -hmm. he just don't get up and talk mm -hmm. yes i don't understand his language but i i know he, wherever he is this money he'll be giving a high five uh whichever sure, place sure. he finds himself and for sure and i know he'll yeah. not disappoint me this time hopefully yes hopefully Making progress from there. Why are you taking us? Okay, to so uh, the speaker is here. MPP and DC must work together. Mm -hmm. uh, the speaker of parliament, Urban Bagbin, uh, has emphasized the need for the two main political parties in the country to work together for the common good of the country and further help Ghana's democracy to grow. Mm -hmm. He said, having played their role to build Ghana's democracy to this level, many Ghanaians were no longer interested in the partisan politics. Mm -hmm. He said the people expected the two main political parties, the MPP and the NDC, mm -hmm. to put the interests of the country ahead of their parochial interest to collaborate uh, by collaborating more for national development. Mr. Bagwin made this comment when the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Amma Sullivan, hmm. paid a case call on him last Wednesday. Amma. Yes, she's hmm. Amma. Saturday born. Yes. Okay. Yes, she's proud to associate with us. Uh, she uh, she used a visit to congratulate the speaker on his ascension to the high office of speakership. The two spoke about a number of key issues pertaining to the development of their respective countries. The conversation was also centered on health, agriculture, and environmental issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. they, they have, uh, is it Nancy Pelosi to be the speaker? The speaker of parliament, yes. And uh, both of those two speakers happen to have a lot in common. Yes. So with okay. the... Longer seven. Okay. Longer seven uh, MPs. Yes. I wouldn't want to dispute yes, yes, that. Yes, I wouldn't yes, want to dispute yes. that. So yes, yes. We saw both, both had a tough time before mm. uh, Nancy had the re election and then Blackburn had the elevation to his present position. Mm. What do you make of, maybe just to make a bit of a case for uh, Ambassador Sullivan this morning, how long do you expect her to stay on? We've seen a situation where when there are shifts in terms of government we have switch of roles and all of that in recent time we saw a case for other nations as well do you think uh madam Emma sullivan will stay on as the ambassador of the u.s to ghana or you see a new one being given the opportunity with your uncle his excellency joe biden taking over uh the uh, role as president of the united states of america uh, kwame well, I see Amma on her way out, but uh, not in the next days. Mm -hmm. But certainly it will happen. Mm. Uh, this is not like ours. This is not as political as ours. Mm. Yes, for ours, NDC comes, NDC member will go to somewhere. MPP comes, MPP member will go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But for this, they are career diploma. They are, they are taken everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, so she can be taken from Ghana and to be posted to nation. Togo. Yes, okay. that's how this operates. I think they, uh, 
US and the UK, that's how the mm-hmm. it operates. So she would continue to be active in foreign service? Yes. Okay. Not in Canada when your party leaves office, you are going back to your village. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are still in, <laughs> say, they are, I think they are career diplomat, not mm-hmm. like I. So, mm-hmm. Ama, uh, well, depending on what her government says, mm-hmm. she may continue to be in Ghana. Mm-hmm. She may be recalled back home mm-hmm. or posted elsewhere. To yes, to another location. To, to, yeah. okay. But Ama, Ama, uh, because she's Ama, she has distinguished mm-hmm. herself. This, this is her second time actually in Ama Ghana. Ghana. Ama Ghana. Yes, this, this is her second time being ambassador to this beautiful country mm-hmm. and uh, she had identified herself well mm. that's why With she chose people. yes uh, and she she knew almost every corner mm-hmm. uh, she eat their food mm-hmm. when she goes out as an ambassador to the communities she goes she she works in the communities a lot mm-hmm. she eats their food she drinks their water she she wear their clothes she do whatever they do she sleep with uh, she sleep in their hearts and their hamlets and stuff that is uh, what diplomacy mm-hmm. is about. Mm-hmm. Not that uh, you lording it over the people. Okay. Yes, that's community development. Mm-hmm. Community development. Mm-hmm. Like I've come to learn from you, the bottom-up approach, right? Yes, mm. but not what government does in Ghana. Really? All, yes, all government projects are top-down. <laughs> not a single. Kwame. I'm telling you. Debatable. No, you can just find out. Debatable. How, how many... How many Mm-hmm. times have you we seen them coming to you yesterday the minister of food was in kumasi saying mm-hmm. they are going to build five interchanges in a hodo in santas have they told you they needed interchanges mm-hmm. maybe what they need is there okay. but because they all all their programs all their projects are top down mm-hmm. they don't sit with the people they sit in a car something comes to their heads and they go tell you they come tell you but when you go to them they may tell you that we don't need uh, an interchange in Ahuju. Maybe we need the we, we need the road mm. linking somewhere somewhere to pass through Ahuju. I don't know Kumasi, so mm-hmm. I can't call the the. My producer is here. You yes. know, he has got the map of Ghana. I only know Santasi. Yes, I only know so Santasi. You'll be rest yes, assured. So you can't say I After don't the I'm show. Going to go. Yes, Santasi may need an interchange, but mm. I don't know. Mm. But when you go consult the people, they mm. may tell you no. Maybe when you get us a road from Ahima Kokobin somewhere somewhere passing through mm-hmm. uh, Pink Panther hotel <laughs> to <laughs> Bekwai Junction, it will be okay. Mm. But they sit in Accra, they have seen that people in Santa need interchange. Mm. Is this not a top-down approach? Mm. That is why I would want to quickly implore the very uh, minds of uh, the channel listeners to be registered right on the show. Remember, even as you do the listening, you can come through on WhatsApp 0503 9231580503923158 just as my uh, big man here Kwame Anamwa is espousing do you have a dissenting view or you happen to be having an affirmative one on that score let us hear you whichever place you are doing the listening from and register your thought on 0503923158 remember that happens to be WhatsApp uh, beyond that you go to Facebook and follow our live streaming there that's Radio Winnie Bay 98.3 FM. Radio Winnie Bay 98.3 FM. You can also do the listening live on the homepage of our homepage. That is uh, UEW. That's uh, www.uew.edu.gh. Remember to come through with your sort. Kwame, beyond that one, where do we head uh, from here? Or you want us to go online and get back to you? Okay. Okay. So going online means with those ones we spoke about. Earlier, remember, it's got to do with that very one. A bit to do with the very front this morning. The Daily Guide happened to be saying NPP blast divisive test books with our own Dr. Prince Amazer. Remember, has been vocal uh, for some good number of weeks now and all to do with NACA and its related uh, experiences. Beyond that, it is one uh, in connection with what Kwame spoke about earlier. It's about uh, that very story that says um, a free Akuto comes so much into focus and like it happens to be saying I didn't dash uh, 1 million Ghana cities for presidential bid so that is what he is saying and Yoko discovers two more sold babies KGL intervention prevent crisis to the daily stage man NLA sets record straight on financial records we happen to be understanding and then post uh, COVID-19 economic recovery underway, say, so say yes, the information minister, that's Kojo 
up on Nkrumah on that very score as well. And then we have something also coming through from the custodian this morning. They mentioned the free Akoto in trouble over that is a premature presidential uh, bid. And this one says Naka needs powers to punish Erin Publisher, so said Dr. Prince Amma. So that is what we are hearing uh, with regards to that story. And then beyond that, MPP condemns tribal bigotry in quote unquote satanic book. And then NLA praises uh, that is um, a pretest for positive partnership. That is what we are told. That is to do with the hash 959 hash operators for positive partnership beyond that to the finder it is nla silent on how 1.1 billion ghana cities was spent guess what in six years to health sector we are told malaria respiratory tract infections hypertension top uh, opd cases as far as greater accra particularly Accra is concerned. So that is what we are getting there. That's the outpatient department as to the ailment, malaria, respiratory tract infections, and then hypertension being top on the list as far as Accra comes into focus. The question will be what may be accounting for that very uh, experience and the health expect will talk to that matter for us. Acknowledge our work, so said Ghanaian poet uh, pleading on that score as well then 214 road project ongoing in ashanti like kwame touched on a while ago and then beyond that very one to the business and financial times we're told new taxes will increase burdens of banks businesses associated a uh, great auditors that is a firm kpmg so according to kpmg new taxes will increase burdens of banks and then businesses on that front as well and tax increment could spike npls according to dr ato forcing on that front still sticking with the bnft finance ministry projects uh 2024 for economic normalcy so that is it for you on that score as well uh still with the bnft covid 19 vaccine raises business confidence guess we saying this according to the association of ghana industry so that is what we are getting from that very area as well to the daily dispatch they mention nla comments kg uh that is l for positive partnership and like kwame mentioned earlier it comes back again i went to kumasi to rest and met party executives it's about the agri minister dr free akoto there for you and yoko and mdc I uh, gave update on baby trafficking investigations. Kojo Mpini on NPP's 2024 slot. I would even ask this question. What is it about the clamor for who becomes a flag bearer in the next four years, if not under four years? Is it not too early to be getting into that very area, Kwame? <coughs> Guys are lazing their boots too. Well, to, to you... Uh, or because to, to them, uh, they have His to. Excellency President Nana Adodankwe Kufuado is here to actually complete his second term, and like we know, that team that is being built is here to even be absolutely known full circle. And we're beginning to get like names being mentioned left, right, center as to who takes over from President Nana Kufuado. Is it not too early? No, they have to. Well, it's too early, but. Uh and uh, uh, they want their people to know that uh, they are interested so mm -hmm. i think we can <laughs> we can pardon them of a sort mm. Mm. let me get back to you what other stories are trending as okay, far as so where your opinion is concerned netherlands ambassador to ghana uh ron striker is praising ghana's covid 19 management mm -hmm. and the government of the netherlands has commended the government of ghana for exhibiting strong political will and taking timely decisions in the interest of safety and well-being of the citizens since the outbreak of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It said beyond the several health interventions the Dutch government has noted with great admiration of the far-reaching socio-economic interventions introduced by the government to lessen the impact of the COVID-19 restrictions on Ghanaians, especially the poor. The Netherlands ambassador to Ghana 
Ron Stryker stated this during the stakeholder briefing on the establishment of National Quality Assurance Program for COVID-19 testing laboratories. Mm -hmm. He said he was convinced that a strong partnership between the Ghanaian health authorities and the Dutch government had helped improve the quality of COVID-19 test results in Ghana. Mm. Okay. The Dutch. Yes. Um, Another great friend of Ghana, right? Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, since the since Netherlands, yes. Holland, yes. for want that's of a better expression. That is for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Okay. Robust education system critical in 21st century um, education. Uh, the Minister of Education, Dr. Yosei Educhum, says no country in the 21st century can transform itself without a robust educational system that focuses on its human resource development. He says such an educational system must provide opportunities for all to improve on themselves to help in the socio-economic development of the country. The minister was addressing sponsors of the Ghana Teacher Prize mm -hmm. at a breakfast meeting in Accra yesterday, mm. organized by the National Teaching Council, to appreciate the sponsors for the continuous sponsorship of the program. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a man for you know. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yao Edutum, and for sure, it's going to be huge. It's going to be big as far as the educational sector is concerned. And like our uh, institution happens to be taking a pace setter role in such uh, do I dare say an adventure it feels super good to be associated with what he's doing because sure. uh, even as deputy we saw his telling work as to how uh, educational sector was given the pluses through it all so to be the number one man now I guess the expectations will be so huge if not big mm. Kwame yes yes uh, Dr. Duchum is a fine guy mm. and uh, we, we we continue to pray for him mm -hmm. so that he succeed he will yes. god willing he yes. will personally he will personally i like him mm -hmm. yes you're not an exception yes i, I think i was telling uh, my producer of the air uh, was it yesterday as to the kind of good things that have happened to our educational sector in recent times some of us of the view he happens to be uh, a cardinal factor into what we are experiencing now as a nation like he struck the nail right on the head mm. uh, if we would want to quote unquote fast track our agenda to develop to get to where we, we would want to be as a nation as to investing in the educational sector it's a non-negotiable uh, issue it's a non-negotiable issue so that's it we just have to throw our weight behind him and ensure that that dream becomes a reality within the shortest possible time. Mm. Kwame. Mm, sure. Sure. So, um, the graphic is telling us that census, census settled for June 27. It should have been last year, right? Yes. Yes. Mm. May, May last year also. Mm. The Ghana Statistical Service has scheduled the 2021 population enhancement census for Sunday, June 27, 2021. The census was expected to take place in 2020 but had to be rescheduled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Ahead of the exercise, the Vice President Dr. Bawumia will today launch the countdown dubbed 100, 100 Days to 2021 Population Enhancing Census. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you have a problem. Right, you have the issues with that. Yes. Right. The countdown is we know it is going mm -hmm. you you've told us that it is going to be june 27. Mm -hmm. should people go and assemble in an air-conditioned place eat, so you're against the eat and take money hmm. no we are it says already june 27. Mm -hmm. so the day comes and we roll it out mm -hmm. so people should go to sit in an air-conditioned place when the place will be rented they won't do it at the ghana statistical service so you are you're concerned about saving the public purse yes what if, we government, are what if government gives the uh, statements that not so much for sure we can say nothing will be spent on an occasion of such nature mm -hmm. uh, not so much will be spent would you be convinced and not so not we shouldn't spend the pesto on just counting this but we know that you see, school. I mean, we I have problem with, with the mindset of the Ghanaian <laughs> you see we the thing is 27 june mm. so why should somebody go somewhere remember when mm. the vice president is leaving the flat staff house mm. he's going to drive in a car not one car oh. at <laughs> least <laughs> around 10 15 20 Windy. cars they are going to Windy. go Windy. even if each one consumes one gallon of fuel mm. how much is it 
then the place that they are going to go i'm telling you it is not the office of the ghana statistical service sure. they are going to rent either alisa hotel or mm-hmm. any of the hotels around to do it they will eat and well, they will take money as well, well, they, well more than ten thousand ghana cities will be spent on these events well what, make what us kind of society is well this? make us depart from what we used to do you see that's how you have to change your mind how does that happen eh? It begins with a change of the mind. You you reason ah the demand you see that ten thousand could build a school. That ten thousand city me it's a projection I'm making. Mm. It's it will be more because the building that the whatever the whole wherever they are going to do it. Mind you, they are not going to do it in the sun. Mm-hmm. I will wish that they will do it in the sun or some Patebia say in mm. some village be, but they will do it in Accra. I am hoping one of these days, even as we enter uh, any new year you should be one of the speakers for the annual new year school at legon oh, that, that has that played so a Google, it's, it's a, a talking thing. shop uh, no, which the, no, no, none of whatever which, they which talk present, about which presents a number of findings i don't that have are time to go and sit there i wouldn't even have time agenda. to go sit there and listen to that that so which platform would you want to get to be able to hear. this you see these are all bottom down uh, top down uh, uh, really uh, yes if you if you are launching this day you don't launch it in accra we you don't launch it in an air conditioned bed in accra go to some patebiasi mm. go to the woman or come by we cry biasi catch on june 27 mm. we are going to count and crawl for yeah back and you see or being proper back and into me or the budget my son as a comment maintain and kind they'll tell you so right so go to my mm. mineral mm. come on Mm-hmm. seeing the vice president in my community mm-hmm. you see the first time i saw the in my village in 1994 <laughs> i was so happy so if you go there to my mother come on my mother or to a bro oh the minute you're back you're back and you're in two do this that 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 hmm. it will be nice then going to sit an air condition room in a cry and talk your big big brothel mm-hmm. for only people who can understand mm-hmm. that your brothel you see mm-hmm. you people you have a problem <laughs> mm, Crummy. You, your problem is big uh, okay yes because let's, this thing let's they see will, what the future the, the, will happen that they will let's take see it. what the future brings yes Based they on will what not do speaking, it at the offices of the ghana side if it does service. happen for the course of ah. the future we don't have any program of a sort taking place and where you spoke about like alicia hotel and it's can the other okay. online places and it's taken to say uh any of the as i said uh, local zones i hope you swallow There's no your local words zone, our for that very zone on that very square as well let's let, let us not begrudge government let's give government the benefit of the double because what benefits of the better doubt? days are government ahead. likes ideas and we are telling government mm, so what do you mm. say we should give ga- ga- uh, government benefits of the doubt okay. there's no doubt it's like ideas we are telling him okay yes okay you see it is time i see that ten thousand mm-hmm. can buy a uh, what do you call it can buy chairs for some school so you you see we have we have there are stories of children who are sitting on on a uh, uh, cement blocks and some on the bare floor to study that money me my that's my concern no i don't have problem with the food that they are going to eat mm-hmm. i don't have problem with the money that they are going to take my problem is they should go to their class say, you do this one grandpa you they they have community centers already they have the apata mm. when the chief sees that mm. you have come you want to do this, that thing the chief will be so happy the, the whole community they will they will do a combo for mm. you that you have come you've recognized them mm. you've come you see some of these things it should be random mm. you don't have to even announce it it should be random this morning the 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 guys at the satellite service they get up they already have this link with the presidency mm-hmm. we 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 they even don't know where they are going mm-hmm. they take the media as they drive they get one committee they go there we are coming to do there's this. one particular uh arm um, of uh national development uncle we seem to have not mentioned this morning that is madam Josephine increments outfit the national commission for civic education even as we uh, count down to that very day what would you say uh, our friends from the ncc will be doing or we wait and like you mentioned because it's more of like the top down approach until the directive comes from above they will not hit the ground running you see it is not them as we are even talking we don't know whether they've engaged them or not Mm -hmm. and the ghana statistical service they don't have the capacity to do the outreach program Mm -hmm. i tell you they don't Mm -hmm. they they don't have it Mm -hmm. meanwhile they've been given a budget of is this 500 something something million to mm. do this mm. to can mm. that's what they've given <laughs> they've been given but it's not but an they easy job to do it's not just a can you it, it requires bra, bra, a lot bra. of work you see i'm telling you that they don't have the capacity mm-hmm. for the outreach mm. uh, the information i don't know whether they've engaged the ncc or not mm. i can't talk about it a very good morning to our father here as far as the photo 
municipal director for NCC is concerned, that's Joseph Aban, right? Seth Acha, that is uh, Ante Sewa, uh, a year, and Koda is Joseph a year, among a host of others. Not forgetting our own uh, Amma, is it uh, Bonzoa, right? Is it, mm. Am I mentioning the name more? Araba Bonzoa. Araba Bonzoa, right? Mm. Good morning to our friends here at the NCCE, the Efutu uh, Municipal Directory. Kwame, moving on from the census issue, where next? Okay, so we have a half girl fined 12,000 mm-hmm. for stealing pistol and ammunition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The story is here, mm. and the uh, woes of pastor involved in enlistment scam deepened. Okay, <laughs> uh, and the uh, Yoko naps three mm-hmm. uh, more baby harvesters. And that story is on page 17 of the Ghanaian okay. Times. I'm interested, baby harvesters. Yes, mm. three more people have been arrested in connection with the baby harvesting syndicate mm-hmm. in a joint operation by the Dental Medical Council in partnership with the Economic and Organized Crime Office. This brings to 14 the number of suspected arrests by the two state agencies so far. Mm-hmm. The suspect, all women, are Florence Aqua, a home help aide in the USA, Eliano Ofori Insia, a friend of Florence, and Nancy Obaya from Pond, who is alleged to have connived with Leonard Adley and Doris Bedou to illegally purchase a baby from a health facility. The executive producer uh, Executive Director of Yoko, Commission of Police, Frank Edupoku, retired said this at a press conference in Accra yesterday, stating that the three babies have so far been rescued and efforts were underway to reunite them with their parents. The director said in February 2022, in February 2020, his outfit received information that Frolins and Eliano had allegedly gone to purchase a baby from Susan Clinic in Latavio Okoshi in the Abekuma municipality of Accra. Mm-hmm. He said they were arrested at their residence at Manet in Obojo while attempting to abscond with the baby to Aguna Suedru Waashe mm-hmm. in the central region. Mm-hmm. In 2019, Florence was introduced to Dr. Hope Kwashi, Mensa of Susan Clinic, to help her adopt a baby. In February 2020, Florence was con- contacted by Dr. Hope Mensa that he had a baby available for adoption. Mm-hmm. COP Edupoku said Florence called Eliano Ofori Insia, who was in Ghana to pick up the baby and made the part payment of $2,500 to Dr. Mensa. Mm-hmm. 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 According to him, together with her, with her nanny, Aku Elevu on the run, they collected the baby and handed over the said amount to Dr. Mensa. Mm-hmm. The director said Florence was arrested on February 4, 2021, while in Ghana to formalize the adoption process in the of the baby she is currently on yoko inquiry bill assisting with investigations cop edupoku said nancy in other in under investigation on the suspicion that she was not biological mother of a two-year-old child in her possession mm-hmm. we have asked for a court order to conduct a DNA test to confirm whether Nancy is the biological mother of that child. Oh, According to him, four petitions have been received as a result of ongoing investigations into the matter. Mm. He said a docket on the two medical doctors and their accomplices who were earlier arrested in connection with the baby stealing syndicate was ready for submission to the AG's office for advice and prosecution. He general. said officers in charge of the case had received threats from unidentified persons to discontinue with the investigations or face the consequence. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that is how things are unfolding. We need to applaud the state security for having uh, gotten to this point of the matter and uh, it will put to rest and the sanctions as expected will be meted to the said uh, rank doers on that very score as well. Kwame, with your permission, if we can pick a few of the online ones since we're almost negotiating the turn and bring to a conclusion our news review this very morning uh, online we happen to be having this very one that happened to be speaking to that matter we spoke to you about since Kwame has done the census uh, kind of uh, story would move beyond it remember it's a VIP to launch the 100 day countdown to Ghana census like this 24 April is concerned beyond that one on the health front remember Ghana recording two new variants of COVID 19. A bit of that story happens to be saying two new variants of COVID-19 has been uh, that is identified in Ghana. The new variant 
were found in uh, that is by the West Africa Center uh, for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. Uh, that is what uh, that is through a sequencing it happened to have done. According to work uh, the new variant were detected from Nigeria and Morocco and immunologist and head of advancement at WACBIP, that's Dr. Yaobidia however said uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine currently being rolled out in the country is potent enough to deal with the new vi uh, variant we happen to be told. So that is the assurance coming through uh, from are expect there as far as the two new variants uh, that have been discovered in our nation ghana is concerned on that very front as well so we know the other uh, fold of expect are calling for immediate action as far as government uh, kind of strategy to nip the issue of the covid 19 pandemic in the bud happen to be concerned on that front as well to one of the earlier ones we spoke to you about remember is in connection with the tuc according to the tuc a number of things are still coming through as well particularly with that very story uh, that says government can take a unilateral decision on wages and salary for public workers a bit of that says the trade union congress as the tuc has taken objection to governments uh that is um decision not to increase the wages of public workers for the next three years they say quote unquote government alone can say we are doing this or doing that without having to decide with the other parties labor and its employers according to the tuc public relations officer uh, who in an interview for the past hours happens to have said a lot more things uh, coming through he proceeded and i quote um that is you think it is the workers that have to give it is always the case that workers are at the tail of everything and in any case as we are all tightening a belt then the belt must be tightened across board there is a standing joint negotiation committee and if that perhaps is not working we should go to the tripartite end of quote so that is what we are getting as far as the trade union uh, congress is concerned on that very uh, front as well particularly uh, the words you heard uh, a while ago happens to be coming to you from that's mrs na ayele adefio she happens to be the pro as far as the tuc is concerned on that very uh, front as well meanwhile the technical advisor at the ministry of finance dr samuel ninoy ashong uh, also indicated that government does not have enough money and it coffers to undertake wage increment in the public sector. Kwame, how do you think workers will be reacting to when those all seesaw experience coming forth? Well, uh, disappointment, dejection and all the adjectives. Mm -hmm. uh, workers wouldn't be happy. See, that's why they, before the presentation of the budget, mm -hmm. um, the we're asking government that they have to sit before the budget presented mm -hmm. but um, their concerns were not listening to mm. uh, the minister went ahead and presented the budget mm -hmm. and we are here uh, uh, the, the work uh, workers front is not there's no joy in in, in workers front mm. and uh, i believe we i learned there is a meeting either mm. today or monday mm -hmm. and then we'll hear from them uh, after the meeting mm. Mm. So we should be optimistic and not pessimistic, right, as workers? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. With your permission, still to do with the online ones, you touched on road safety issues a while ago. So let me quickly uh, come to you with this one. A disturbing one, of course, uh, and I'm uh, very much in the know you spotted that. So I say three bodies identified in solar accident, which happens to have taken the lives of each persons as far as yesterday is concerned a bit of that says three bodies in thursday's gory accident at the outskirts of solar have been identified by their families and this leaves five more waiting to be uh, claimed as the wa hospital uh, morgue this follows an incident where a wa kumasi bound sprinter benz bus with registration number as uh, 3022 that's 15 somersaulted and crashed into a nearby bush on the solar tona 
uh, Kaiba district. I hope I'm getting the name of Kwame uh, of the Savannah region. And per how things have gone, we are told quite troubling. Uh, it happens to be. And we say, may the invaluable soul of those that have departed rest in the safe bosom of the Almighty God. It comes to the fore again. We need to be very vigilant when we're on the roads, whether as vehicle owners or just commuters for that very matter. We need to be each other's keeper. If the driver isn't doing the right thing, we need to draw uh, his or her attention as to what exactly is to be done because like it's been said on countless occasions, speed thrills, but kills. We need to be guided by that. Kwame, any uh, piece of advice you'd want to share before we wrap it up finally? <coughs> Mate, um, we must be careful on mm. the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, these people, they didn't tell their family that they are going to die on the roads, and so they should get money ready to bury them. Mm. But here, some someone's negligence, uh, we've lost uh, these beautiful uh, souls. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, some also happened in this in the central region mm -hmm. on the Cape Coast to Fuprasu Road. Mm -hmm. uh, a car burst a tire, and four people lost their lives. Mm. Uh, drivers should be cautious on the route. Mm -hmm. They should drive uh, with their heads on. Yes, their heads on. They shouldn't drive as if they are uh, driving. Mm -hmm. It's saddening to mm -hmm. to hear this on our roads. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, road accidents. <laughs> They are not good. Mm. And, uh, we should try all that we can uh, to stop it. In January alone, or in the first two months of this year, more than 200 people died on the route. This can is imagine. this is no. It's more than 200. Yes, this is not a good piece of news. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be hearing this news in this few mm. uh, past month. It is not good. Yes. Mm. Mm. Kwame, we're just about wrapping up uh, this very morning, but before we do so, let's take a bit of the very ones coming forth uh, from, I said, uh, elsewhere, right? Talking about elsewhere, we are told uh, that house passes spell of immigration bills amid influx of migrants crossing the U.S. Mexico border. So, a lot more work under the watch of uh, that's Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, as far as the U.S. Is concerned like we mentioned earlier so we have to quickly lay bare that very story as well and we are told uh, for those in the world of business remember Wall Street is saying uh, their biggest fear now is not the pandemic but rather inflation so that is what Wall Street as far as uh, those of you in the world of business are concerned would want you to be very much aware of this very morning and then we are told that South Sudan's uh, South Sudan's fourth vice president Rebecca uh, Nyandeng, who is the widow of the country's uh, liberation leader, that John Garang, has tested positive uh, for coronavirus. That is what we are getting this very morning. Beyond that, very one as well, a lot more happened to be coming to us as far as the other fronts are to be focused on, particularly with the region Mali, because we're told Mali villages five um, month uh, siege temporarily lifted on that very uh, score as well still to do with other happenings on the continent remember apartheid era leader remember him it's about the big man fw de Klerk, uh, diagnosed with cancer we pray for a safe uh, do i call it management of uh, his situation and recuperate in good time as well that's fw de Klerk, the former leader of the rainbow nation that's south african bodies found handcuffed and dumped in eastern libya we are told as well uh, beyond that very one has got to do with the biggest one like we know it's about a certain maybe before we do that producer has just indicated to me so let me come to you on that very score before i take your thought on that one Kwame Anama, since we told you it's going to be a surprise Okay, maybe we'll have to have a second bite of that very one right here. 90 
8.3 FM. Uh, Kwame, we're trying to do something right here, but uh, technicality seem to be having a bit of us. So let me maybe switch to you on this very score, and then we take it from that very front as well uh, quickly. Kwame, we know it about the big man. That's John Magufuli. Uh, the name, is it uh, Hassan, right? Being prepared to take over in Tanzania. Kwame, your thoughts. I think for the first time on radio, let me take your thoughts on John Magufuli, even as the countdown is on for his final farewell. Yeah, Kwame. Yes, L let me let me take your tribute to the late uh, John Magufuli this very morning because I think you and I have had our own talk and all of that off the air, but on radio, let's do that right about now. Uh, right, my uh, sincerest condolences to to the Vice President, Her Excellency, or the President, Her Excellency um, Sami, Samia Suluhu Hassan, and uh, his party and uh, his family for the loss of uh, John Magufuli. John was my man. Of all the over 50-something presidents we have on the continent, uh, I liked him because uh, he he will always tell you his mind. He will not wait for you to go and before he tells you what he thinks is the best. Um, his policies, he felt the policies especially with the foreign policies that those that will benefit his people he will go for them he was always not in a rush uh, to go for chinese whatever and whatever with those strange attachment uh, it's unfortunate that we have to lose him at 61 like this uh, anyway we don't know what actually killed him but the gossip is that mm. uh, uh, Folks are linking it to COVID-19. Yes, Others are yes. saying the cardiac gossip, arrest. The gossip is that uh, he died of COVID-19. But this is a guy who do not believe in the existence of the COVID. Uh, he, he never at once was happy with the mention of that disease. And uh, so whatever that we, our government put in place, like the distancing, the wearing of masks, what not, no uh, that was not it was not in their vocabulary in fact in the heat of in the heat of the COVID, he was busy campaigning without much social distancing whatever and he lost he won the election with a big uh, margin uh we in, he we were planning not knowing god was also planning and god's plan is always the best uh, he knew that uh, uh magufuli should die at this time uh, it 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 it's not a good time in the history of any nation to lose your your leader, but uh, our heart goes out to them, especially the president, mm -hmm. the, the new president, Her Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan. I know mm. uh, she will perform, and I also know that uh, those people who think everything should be for them <laughs> will try to pull her legs, mm. but she should stay focused. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't listen to them. They want uh, her seats. They are interested. She should never at once listen to them. Mm. She should do what to benefit the women in Tanzania and uh, other n and in those communities uh, in East Africa. That is what we pray that she do. She shouldn't listen to them uh, because they want her seats. By now, they 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 they've cast their stars. That's the uh, uh, Magufuli should have picked them. Uh, for the vice president's loss in the election, but Magufuli was was wise in picking Samia, uh, so she should be bold. We are by her, uh, we are standing by her, and we will pray for her, and we know she will succeed. We know that she will put women up in Tanzania. She will not fail us. She should, if she listens to them, she will fail us. But if she mm -hmm. use her head, mm -hmm. the head that God gave her, okay. she will succeed. Mm. And gradually, women will be coming. You see, it's our prayer that in the not long to distant future, all uh, countries in Africa should be ruled by women. Let's say in the next four, uh, eight, ten years, all countries, those greedy ones will leave the scene, <laughs> like your uncles in uh, hmm. Sudan and uh, Equatorial Guinea, wherever they are, be, uh, Togo, be Benin, 
mm-hmm. uh, Central African Republic, Cameroon, mm-hmm. everywhere. All mm-hmm. those beautiful who live the scene, mm-hmm. and we have women coming mm-hmm. to heal the wounds of the nation. Mm-hmm. So gradually, for you, it is a prophecy and a fulfillment on the continent of Africa, uh, based on the current happenings. Oh yes, something mm. like that. And mm. I know it it will not uh, keep long. Mm-hmm. We will have women occupying uh, all the seats in their respective countries in Africa. I I've I've said it and uh, uh, I'm not exaggerating that uh, women are their best managers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Women are the only people who can change the fortunes of Africa. Mm-hmm. Women are the only people who can, or are the gender who can change the fortunes of the world. Mm-hmm. And I pray that in our time it should happen. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm ready to support any woman who wants to be president. I will okay. vote for the person. I know when I vote for that person, that person will win. Mm. Yes, to 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 govern this country. Even as we conclude, better late than never. The technical team happens to have sorted that experience out, and uh, we are told this happens to be the very final words from him. Sio kwamba hawaogopi kufa wote tunaogopa kufa lakini angalau tunaamini kwamba Mungu yupo na tuwe waangalifu katika janga hili otherwise tutaangamia wote ndugu zangu wa Kristo ninawatakia siku njema Jumapili njema tumeamua kumtanguliza Mungu katika siku tatu lakini kwa ndugu zangu wa Kristo hiki ni kipindi cha kwarezima cha kufunga siku arobaini Okay, so that is it for you, Mom. Just a bit of what he espoused as John Magufuli, the immediate past uh, leader of uh, that is Tanganyika now, Tanzania. I remember, best known for that very language, Swahili. And like they say in Swahili, Asante simply means thank you. We know his paid is due as to leadership. Uh, issues on the continent because the continent have been questioning severally when it comes to the subject of leadership. For me, the question then comes forth, what kind of a legacy would he leave for the rest of his uh, compatriots, so to speak, if not contemporaries, uh, for what he's left behind on that score as well? Kwame, you've said greatly as to, uh, talking about Her Excellency Hassan, uh, taking over from John Magufuli as we exit the studios. Your closing thoughts? Well, um, we are going for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, we should be moderate in all that we do. Mm. Yes, and uh, uh, we now, should uh, also try to observe the COVID protocols. 19. The disease is still out there, and the we should do all the best to prevent ourselves and our families from contracting this uh, deadly disease. Drivers mm. should drive all. Mm-hmm. And those who sell shouldn't cheat. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Okay. Kwame, minimde ye kwe, ane ye gwejida uwa weneba, it's marketing weneba, so like tradition demands, you've been a proponent of the bottom-up approach. Uh, not to say what we did earlier happens to be top down approach. So, as tradition demands, if I didn't catch a year two for Ansan EFE Studios. Well, I, I, I said it. Mama kind of. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. My yeah, it's good. Uh, when you're not fasting, you're not so busy. Mm-hmm. You know, until you're far, I don't feel it's good. My you're far, you're fasting it's good. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. 
Very grateful to you, Kwame Anama, this very uh, morning. And this is a special dedication to you. I know how uh, big an advocate you happen to be for everything Tanzania, everything uh, that is John Magufuli. So going out to you, Kwame Anamwa, and the very disciples of Kwame Anamwa here in Weneba and Belong. Remember, he's paid his due. And like the great William Shakespeare said, when you find your stage uh, yourself, I'd have to say yourself on the stage of life, you give your best show. And we know the very late John Magufuli has paid his due to the great cause of the nation Tanzania and the great cause of the African story as well. So let's enjoy this when we are back to take the final 30 minutes. Superman, when he said it, young Gozi Burra, and I don't know if we can, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Baba, I don't know. Magu Fuyuli Kwa Shuja, Metua Chagira, Wanda Wanyonge, Sita Kuna Tena, Ola Lepema, Ola Lepema, Umetua Chia Kilio. Nipombe makufuli Nota 
Johnny Bombe Magufu Ulisimama kidete Kupinga kila lisilo jema Yoya inchi yetu Lewa upotena Haupotena Upotena na sisi Yerere na mkapa wakupoke Na mula ni mahala pema Mahala pema Mahala pema Mahala pema Mkotena na sisi Asante Oh asante joni pombe Asante Raisi wa wanyonge Asante Okay, so that is it for you right here at 98.3 If I remember in somebody's uh, homeland The expression Asante simply means Thank you So that is how we say thank you to the legendary John Magufuli This very morning right here at 98.3 FM As we switch lanes Don't forget a lot more still to come through Before we press the tip exactly 10 As far as the windy morning express is concerned Okay, so like we always do every Friday, remember we're taking you there. How the weekend be like and uh, for the very friends we happen to be having from the world of... Like we always do, remember join right here this very morning by one of our own Itabal. Okay, so that is it for you right about now here at 98.3 FM. Joined by one of our own, it's about Godfrey Omar for, for everything Friday sport right here on the platform Windy Morning Express. And uh, Godfrey, like we always say, it's Friday. How are you doing? Yeah, Papa, I'm doing good. And that's where you are. You know, you can look at the generation or Mark is a photo of our mama. Every <laughs> Ghana Premier League, 
Yes, as I said earlier, say, yes, she lives in a plenty of votes. And I say, you will be set up now, community, I will change the second half in the cover. Two schools, everything that, in fact, preparation of the cover, and the media, 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 and I thank you for the call. Thank you, Alex. We have my friend, Denise, from Brazil. I have been telling you now, I have been telling you that my home is for four months of the same year. I'm going to have a Denise, I'm going to come out here, I thank you for the call. And then, we are on the police party. I'm going to have a Denise, 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 I'm going to have
got to do with nuggets for life your prime time counseling session on radio kankati counseling center uew <laughs> topic will be stress to be delivered by dr patricia mousy amos <laughs> remember that is built for monday 22nd my 2021 <laughs> still to do with reminders right here 98 point fm <laughs> Don't forget about it. It's about to all the over 100 students UEW, whether postgraduate or undergrad. This is the week allotted for Faculty of Social Sciences. Insofar as the medical examination exercise being conducted by the Director of Health Services is concerned, be at the University Clinic. Remember from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. However, for the laboratory investigations, taking of samples and at 11 a.m. daily. Insofar as you visit the university homepage and complete your confidential medical report form. Remember, the other ones happen to be such that you are to go through the ear screening, vital signs check, eye screening, clinical assessment, plus taking of chest x-ray that is going for 30 Ghana cities. So to all students from the Faculty of Social Sciences, remember it is your week for the final day to go through the exercise of postgraduate students, BA Social Studies Education, BA Political Science Education, BA Economics Education, BA Geography Education and BA History Education. Remember, once you fail to report or complete your medical examinations within the period, you would forfeit your student identification card, pay a fee in the ensuing years for the medical examinations to be redone, not be cleared in the final year for graduation. Except for all fresh students of the University of Education whenever and treated to effectively participate in the medical examinations. Still to do with reminders right here, 98.0 FM. Going out to the very members of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UEW branch, you are to be in the know that sales of the UTAC lines has commenced. Interested members at the Jumako should pay 20% uh, deposit to Mr. Pascal Perdue, while those in Winneba pay to Dr. Ebenezer Amano Latte. Has already announced the price per plot is 5,000 Ghana cities. Members will have to make special arrangements to be taken to the site every Wednesday, insofar as the month of March is concerned, at exactly 3:30 p.m. So take note of that. Beyond you paying the 20% deposit to that, is Mr. Pascal Pado, if you happen to be in a Jumako, and then to Dr. Benesa Manola, if you happen to be here in Winneba. Special arrangement to be taken to the site it happens every Wednesday for the month of um, March at exactly 3.30 p.m. So to do with sales, now we drift to the fold of the revenue office as far as the University of Education Winneba is concerned. Remember, number of souvenirs up for sale. Paper bag going for two Ghana cities, Sosa, two Ghana cities, 50 pesos, chest pin, five Ghana cities, and yeah, then car flakes, eight Ghana cities, 50 pesos, yeah. key holder happens to be 10 Ghana cities, face towel happens to be going for 11 Ghana cities, Zumbun. scarf, 21 Ghana cities, tie, 23 Ghana cities, t shirt, 35 Ghana cities, <laughs> Lacoste happens to be going for 45 Ghana cities, <laughs> wristband, two Ghana cities, and three Ghana cities, that of the pen drive, <laughs> ranging from 4 to 16 gigabytes, you just have to pay 34 Ghana cities and then go home with 4 gigabyte 43 Ghana cities for the 8 gigabyte and then 56 Ghana cities for the 16 gigabyte the UW towel is going for 115 Ghana cities and 65 Ghana cities not forgetting the UEW clause that's per yard going for 20 Ghana cities 24 Ghana cities and then 30 Ghana cities finally knowledge happens to be the UEW umbrella whether to keep at bay the scorching sun or to keep at bay the rains it's about the UW umbrella 30 Ghana cities and then 35 Ghana cities for purchases and for the inquiries locate the revenue office of UW on the ground floor of the main administration block 
as far as the North Campus is concerned. I remember, like we've been advised by the Winnebar base to do how to do with the University of Education Winnebar, Director of Health Services. Insofar as the pandemic happens to be raging, we need to do the need for wearing a face mask mandatory at all places and premises on UW campuses. Body contact, including handshakes and hands, should be avoided. Social distancing should be observed in all interactions and hygiene measures must be practiced at all times and as often as possible washing of hands with uh, soap and the running water or use alcohol based sanitizers. So don't be surprised insofar as you want to gain entry to UEW as Winneba Campus or Jumaco Campus. The security director would want you to go through the mandatory experiences. Big salute to Sir yeah, Basolomi Alubo King and your men and women this morning. Whether at the North Campus, uh, Central Campus, or here at the South Campus. Yeah, and then to the hardworking health uh, services directory under yeah. the watch of Dr. Bess of Faye Ewuku. Remember, for anything COVID, as far as the health directory is concerned, yeah. get in touch. 0202041150. As we close the chapter this very morning, come tomorrow between the hours 8.30am and 9.30am, I implore you to make a date with Uncle Sess as he takes you to the beautiful world of children right here on radio. We call it uh, Children's Corner. Between this weekend, uh, Saturday 20th March 2021, join Na and Ayeji. Remember Na and Ayeji featuring on Children's Corner between 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. as they join Uncle Seth as they dazzle us. To be part of Children's Corner for the Future, get in touch on 0243469318. Children's Corner, the save event for children on radio. On the wings of that, I just say many, many thanks for having been part of the deal right here this morning. I sat in for your regular host, Apia Kobe Jones, a.k.a. Kim Batuka. Supported by Stephen Ose Ajaman as my producer, not forgetting Kwame Anamoa. And then uh, the big man, it's about AB Ghani, our technical head, holding us down on 98.3 FM. You, the special listener, remember because you did the uh, listening, you give us a reason to do what we do. Ultimately, we say to God be the glory, but don't forget a lot more store in store for you right here on Radio Winnipeg. Up next, has got to do with with Workers Avenue plus your land break with the one and only it's about Rebecca Robertson right here on the Ultimate in Campus Radio and by extension don't forget DJ Mickey will be coming your way with Reggae Vibes uh, later on in the course of our programming and then for sure the very big 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 man it's about senior colleague uh, King Kobe to come your way with the ever ever vibrant super drive time between 3 and then 6 as well and don't forget, it's going to be DJ Maestro to come your way with weekend flavors between 6 and then 10 as well. And then for the late drive, it's got to do with DJ Stereo Osman Mimini coming your way with Windy Slow Jump right here on 98.3 FM. So that is your part as a journey this very day as far as programming is concerned. We have done our part and we depart the scene as Rebecca Robertson takes over for Workers Avenue. But before she does, so remember, in comes Kwame Anamwa. With everything news in brief, right about now here on the Ultimate In Campus Radio. Stick and stay, and God richly bless us all. News. It's 10 a.m. This is the news in brief. The National Executive of so the New Patriotic Party, NPP, will from today commence a working tour of the regions and constituencies across the country starting from the Greater Accra region. The tour is to engage the party structures as the party seeks to re-energize, restructure and reposition itself to deliver the Break 8 agenda. From Greater Accra, the National Executive will proceed to the Ashanti Ahafo, Bono, Bono East regions in the first phase of the exercise the minister for food and agriculture dr usu efri yakutu has rubbish claims that he was in the ashanti region over the weekend to announce his bid for the flag bearer position of the party 
of the NPP, according to Dr. Afriya Kutu, these claims making rounds on social media is a deliberate attempt to court public disaffection against him. His comment follows earlier report of a private meeting with some top-notch power brokers of the NPP in Kumasi. Now, residents of Gumwa Yiyano in the Gumwa East District of the Central Region have been thrown into a state of shock after they discovered a 10-month-old baby buried alive at the beach on Thursday. The innocent baby was wrapped in white cloth and cotton wool put in her mouth, nose and ears. Some eyewitnesses said they suspect that the act was committed by Sakawa boys because the head of the boy was down in the sun while the legs were up. Some children were reportedly discovered some children who reportedly discovered the baby while playing at the beach quickly informed some elderly persons who proceeded to the scene and found the lifeless body of the innocent baby. The body of the deceased has been conveyed to was conveyed by the Union police to trauma for preservation and autopsy. The Gomwanyano District Police Command has commenced investigations into the incident. And that's the end of the news that came to you from the studios of Radio Windy Bay 98.3 here in Windy I am Kwame Anamo. Good morning. The COVID-19 pandemic is still with us. Stay alert. As we welcome some of you back to school, here are a few things to know to stay protected. Always wear a mask to cover your nose and mouth. Do not wear your mask on your chin. Wash your cloth face mask daily. Avoid touching the front part of your mask when in use. Do not share your face mask with your mates. Avoid touching your nose, mouth or eye with unwashed hands. Surgical and N95 masks are not to be used for more than 8 hours. If you're using one made with fabric, wash it in warm soapy water as often as possible. Remember not to use the same mask for more than 12 hours. Dispose of quickly any used tissue into a bin. Do not spit around. Wash your hands with soap and the running water regularly. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer frequently. Cover your mouth with a tissue or bent elbow anytime you cough or sneeze. Observe personal hygiene. Do not shake hands or hug anyone. Always keep a distance of at least one meter from any other person. Do not share personal items with your mates. Do not leave campus if not necessary. Inform your house or hall master or mistress if you feel unwell. Do not self-medicate. Eat nutritious foods with fruits and vegetables. Register your name daily in the attendance register. Avoid crowded places. Sleep well and avoid stress. Do not give out names of your mates with COVID-19. Let's show concern and love. Welcome back to school. This public announcement is brought to you by Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Information and our partners.